Yeah. I'm all ready. I've done all the tweeting and. Yeah, nice, nice. Facebook. I haven't done that yet, but <laughs> it will come. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. Today I have a favorite guest here, Dara Ukarni. Welcome. Thanks, Monica. Lovely to be here. It was great to hear your voice. Yeah, you as well. Uh, for those who don't know you, Dara, can you please uh, tell you me a little bit about yourself? Sure, yeah. Um, I am a professional poker player for the last 14 or 15 years. I started very late. Um, I was past the age of 40 when I started playing poker. Before that, I was a competitive marathon runner and ultra marathon runner. Uh, I was Irish champion in ultra marathons, um, um, but I've started playing poker when I was forty-two. Got very obsessed with it, and uh, I've been making my living from it since. I also write books. I've written four strategy books: uh, one on satellites, one on PKOs, one on ICM, and the most recent one on GTO. And I do the Chip Race podcast with uh, David Lappin as well. Yeah, you don't know. You don't <laughs> many things, and that's impressed me a lot. Like you started playing when you was forty. It's like insane, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very, very cool. few people start at that age, and very few people who start at that age end up doing it for a living. Yeah. But, um, I, I I have been playing games, strategy games, all my life. Like I played chess as a kid. I was pretty good. Um, I played bridge at a very high level as well. I played backgammon, so I've always liked sort of strategy games. Um, but poker is definitely my favorite now. Yeah, it's mine as well. I didn't play chess before, um, right before New Year's. Actually, I did start uh, after C Magnus uh, crushed uh, <laughs> these two tournaments. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you did that stream, very good stream with Magnus. That was very interesting, um, just to see Magnus play poker as well. Yeah, um, I was very impressed uh, with him, how he's talking hands. Yeah. So um... Yeah, it's, fun it, it's funny you say that, uh, which, of course, is true. For somebody who doesn't play poker uh, as his main thing, he's actually very good. But um, a lot of people had, I guess... Uh, unrealistic expectations how good they'd be they thought just because he's the best chess player ever that he'd be amazing at poker as well um even though he doesn't play it very much and they said to me afterwards like i was really surprised he wasn't better at poker um and i was like but he doesn't really play it very much no. but he, uh, um yeah but the, the, there is this thing around chess where people think that because chess is sort of like the ultimate strategy game that if you're good at chess you must be good at everything else but it really isn't like that. I played a tournament in uh, the Isle of Man a few years ago that was poker and chess. Yeah. So we all had to play chess and we all had to play poker. And the chess players just beat all the poker players, obviously, at um, at chess. Yeah. But then when it came to playing the poker, they were pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because it's not their game. Everybody's good at their own game. Yeah, that's true. But that's the thing about Minus who pressed me was like, he was thinking what the opponent could have or uh when he burst the last tournament he was like uh it, i think he has like a flush bro or something and i'm gonna go with this and he was was right though so he's like when he explained hands it was like it was so yeah. nice to hear because it was like he had done this more than once before so yeah yeah, I think if he if he put any work into it at all, he'd be very good at at poker, obviously. Um, because I think it's not just chess; he's good at he's supposedly one of the best fantasy football players as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I think so he's yeah. good on strategy. Yeah. In general. Yeah, Let's exactly. Here, right before me and Dara got got done, we had a huge bot in the fifty. And now I'm back, and this guy who had four. For do suited all in, he four bet for do suited. He putting he bet twenty one big so nine nine seven. I raised he yeah he limped under again. So okay, this time he he has king deuce. He was the big blind call with seven eight. So 
of course I hit the queen on the river. <laughs> Again, yeah. this guy is is gambling out there. Yeah, I think one of the reasons why people like PKOs is they have a good excuse to gamble. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually thinking about a new tweet uh, that I, I want to ask. What is the best Sunday tournament now who is not a Maniac rebuy or like Ooh. a main event like you have one, two, three, re-entry? Like Stars had the Sunday Million before, but now yeah. it's like a 109 PKO. Yeah, yeah, no, everything, everything has really changed. Yeah, I'm trying to think of all the sites. 888 has gone mystery bounty. Uh, I'm struggling now. Um, the supermoon, obviously, or not the supermoon, the supernova is still obviously. But that's yeah, that's, that's one, one of uh, my favorite because it's like, yeah. uh, well, it could be two re entry, that will be fine for me, but yeah, but if you think like, <laughs> yeah, about the players, it's probably good with not, not that. Yeah, all the players who play only on Sundays. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure. I know stars had had some tournaments started like five o'clock or something, but that's too early for me. So when I'm sitting yeah. down like eight o'clock, it's like okay, I have ten bigs if I'm jumping into a two hundred and fifteen, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. um. Yeah, it's really hard to think of anything. So the Sunday Million used to be amazing. That used to be an absolutely brilliant tournament. But yeah, everything has I, I think so too. But now I feel like I feel like that one is ruined. Yeah, no, it is ruined. It's just an it's just another hundred PKO now. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it's just uh, have have the old name Sunday Million. Yeah. So. Oh, hello to Banded Country in the chat, my fellow countryman. Oh. He. I don't think he lives in Ireland anymore. He lives in the in, in America, but we met him at the WSOP last year, myself oh. and David. Yeah. Very nice guy. Welcome. Welcome. Thanks for following the channel. And everyone, uh, Dara and Dara. Barry have been so kind and give away uh, three books for the stream. Yeah. And we are going to give one of one of them away today it's a digital book so you can you get a code from me and you can download it on your computer and you have it forever and it's what you want to talk about what this last book you have yeah the last book we have uh, the latest one is uh, it's called gto poker simplified um and it's basically aimed at people who have heard about gto um maybe have tried reading some of the other books but haven't been able to Fully grasp what, what what they are because they're the other books on GTO are aimed at a very high level. Um, so this is a more introductory level to try and explain GTO to people. Um, and yeah, we've been ver very happy with the way people have been reacting to the book. Uh, a lot of people have said, yeah, they had tried other books and it didn't really work for them, but uh, our book explained it to them. So um, that's very much what we're trying to do with that book. Nice, nice. I haven't uh, read the. Uh, I read two of your books. You have four, right? Four, yeah. yeah. Uh, the first first one was satellite. The second one was on PKOs. The third one was on ICM, and uh, this one, as I said, is on GTO. Yeah. Um, I need to read the last one. The GTO one, yeah. 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 It's a, are you explaining like the difference between GTO and exploits and yeah yeah there's a couple of sections in the book where we talk about uh, exploits because you can use solvers obviously to identify exploits as well as um, I think I'm just going to show the S9 here yeah it's a Ooh. it's a PKO so he'll Lost call aces. fairly wide. Lost aces uh, against jacks here all in three in the big thirty three. So we're now down to four bigs and gonna jam our last four bigs with ace tender. And you are all in and you win. Nice. I won a bounty, yeah. And bounty as well. Nice, nice. I have Hensi Pensy here on my table as well. I, have... um, I, I was watching his stream before. Yeah. 
and uh, yeah, very good Dutch player. I watched his stream and he he des he described me as a net. So oh, <laughs> now I know what he thinks about me. No, I'm joking. He said I was I was on the tight side. Yeah, not exactly. Yes. I double up um, base ten. I got the same dude had King Jack this time. Oh, nice. So now I'm back to nine and a half weeks. <laughs> yeah. So you did very well in the last series, right? If I remember correctly. Uh, I didn't play the last. Or I think it was that before or this one. It was a uh, in best, uh, online series. Not yeah. the last one, but that one before. Mm -hmm. I did uh, great in that one. Uh, I was I was winning one of them, the high I think, and I was yeah. second in the medium. That was I like fuck because I lost the uh, lost the uh, thousand euro uh, study course on uh... upswing. Yeah, upswing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I, I was like that. third or something in the lows. I did very well. I haven't started this well on this special. Poker championship. How are yeah. you? How do you start? I start. I started really badly before. Before last night, um, all I had was one min cash uh, in a high, um, but yesterday I came second in one of the highs. Um, I lost heads up to Linus Lomu. Oh yeah. Oh, this might even be a call against him. I played a lot with him. He's a regular. Yeah. He's so loose. Uh, hence, he's so loose is almost a call, but I guess I won't call. Um, yeah, uh, so, I know Simon very well. He's an Irish guy. He, he's not playing that long. He, he, I think he started during the pandemic, um, ah. but he's already doing very well, not just on Unibet, but he won the high roller at the IPO. Oh. Uh, I think he might have won his first three live tournaments. He's got some ridiculous records. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, he's but a very tough that's uh, that's why people get into poker. You started always good, right? <laughs> yeah. If you if you start playing poker and you uh, do really well at the start, it's much easier to keep going. Yeah. And and you're not good enough to realize that it's just luck. Um, it's just variance. But uh, I I I was definitely like that. I ran really well for my first year. Yeah. I won my first ever big live tournament actually, uh, and I just thought poker was the easiest game ever. Yeah. <laughs> You won the Irish yeah. Open or something, right? Uh, the European Deep Stack. Yeah, Europe, yeah, but, but the was in, was in Ireland. It was in Ireland, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool. <laughs> um, How much yeah, did you so get I'm, for that one? Uh, 47,000. Oh, nice. Um, years ago. Um, yeah, it's and most of the people I know as well are professional. They they They, they started very well in the first year, so yeah I kept them going how long have you been playing since 2009 wow so you been, uh... like you were born in 2009 month <laughs> <laughs> uh, so i have uh, it's 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 a few years now yeah yeah but i haven't played like i was like going through my books last year I was like, oh, I played so much live yeah, last year. <laughs> I thought yeah. I played much live. But then I found, found out I played uh, seven tournaments in Dublin. Yeah. Uh, in the Norwegians. Uh, and then I played three in Norway. And I played two in uh, EPT London. <laughs> yeah. And then I have four in Malta. That was it. Yeah, the whole year. That was it. That was it. Six in tournaments. <laughs> yeah. And I thought I played much live. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Last yeah. year, you know. But I, I'm not playing that much live anymore. It's like so difficult because of the kids and. Yeah. I'm not. I have not. Uh, I'm not uh, working hundred percent anymore. I just work fifty. So I'm. Okay. So I have like yeah. two weeks on my work uh, offshore, and then I have ten weeks off. And it's perfect for the online games, though. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know how you balance it all. I mean, you, 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 you play a lot online. You have two kids. You have a job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I no. busted a ten euro king jack against eight ten. 
So, still in the 250 though. The one with the highest uh, prices, at least. Yeah. No, you can say I, I, I'm pretty on and off, like uh, playing online though, because some normally I try to have like two two days a week, and try to maximize the volume that time. But when you stream, you have to go down and not playing yeah. too much table. So, yeah. um, it's like. When then they are serious, like uh, Unibet have it or or Star Set, that's the only actually series I'm prioritized to play. It's the Unibet one and uh, Unibet online series I played and uh, e no, not the EPT, but uh, but now I have brain freeze here, but. And uh, stars, they have like the the one in May and the one yeah. in September. Yeah, the scoop and W. Yeah, and scoop and W. Coop, yes, it was any still yeah. I just couldn't look you up there, and I have a price there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. so um, that's the series I actually prioritized. It's a lot of series online though, but in Norway, like it's not every site you can play on. So yeah, so that's the problem. Um, and it's like GG, I have so little volume on GG, Yeah. but I feel every time I open the client, I'm, I'm running bad. So I'm just closing it again. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so I haven't like, after all the GG stuff, uh, was it last year or a year before, you know, what, the, yeah. uh, everything I took all, all my money out and then it yeah. go like, I think it was like. Six months, six months or something. I, I put it in again, uh, yeah. and then I played only like a visa P tournaments or some higher buy-ins and my bankroll on GG. So it's like when you're running bad, then the whole the bankroll like disappear every time. So now yeah. I'm going down to playing small tables. Uh, like uh, small tournaments, like five to thirty, just to try to to get, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. Like our, our brains are very good at seeing patterns, and when you play on different sites, you can see the sites you you can just feel the sites you're running well on and the sites you're running badly on, yeah. and and you feel completely differently. On <laughs> you know, if you're if you're on, if you're on a site where you're running well, you're feeling very good and very confident, and you think you're going to win everything. Yeah. And if you're on a site where you're running badly, you think, oh no, this isn't going to work out. Yes, yeah, so every time it's like, oh no, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, uh, so that's why I find find out, uh, and the problems I know also it's like, the only thing is like I don't want to take it up it's like it's so annoying when you always have the 80 20 and you're losing so i don't want yeah. the client to affect me on ed other clients so i'm just i think like okay when i don't play too much table then i can have it <laughs> yeah. but yeah. the problem is for me yeah. it's like i don't have a big volume there so if i'm yeah. taking it up it will be better like I do on Unibet and Stars because it happened there all the time as well. But I have so much more tables, so I don't feel like yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, interesting in the two euro here. It's only heads up though. We flopped three of a kind. Oh, no action. No action. So. We have tens and not again in the big 33, so we jam it. Ten big stone. Mm, good luck. Thanks. I've limped the button here with 10 8 because Hensy Pensy likes to shove the big blind. Oh, nice block, though. Nice block, yeah. He, uh, he made a straight against me earlier and he played it very trappily. He didn't bet at any point, so. Mm. 
Um, I don't believe he has much here, so I'm just going to call. I get called by three big blinds stack and lose to ace four up. So now I'm down to 7.6 in the big blind though. And now I'm going to bet enough that he can shove with full equity in his mind. So about a third of his stack. Me and you are in the same table there. <laughs> are we? Uh, in the in the. Oh yeah, yeah. I see you now. Yeah, the game. I, the game. I don't know how to play. <laughs> I was like, mm, should I go with this hand? And I like, oh, it's you. I'm not gonna go with this. Hand. <laughs> yeah. With my seven base. I feel a big disadvantage because you, you you know nearly all the games, right? In poker. Uh, not not every game, but at least eight game. <laughs> But I think yeah. it's hard and one of the hardest games is like stud high low. It's very tough game. That's the only other Omaha High is the only other game that I think I'm reasonably good at because uh an Irish guy who was very good at the game taught me how to play it. Yeah. Um but I don't play it very much. Uh I kinda know PLO, but not really. I'm really much just kind of a holding specialist. Yeah. And I know for a fact you are. And you, me and you have some yeah. study sessions, and yeah. I've been very great because you have like everything run up in different sims, and we look at different scenarios. Okay, what are we going to do on this board with 40 bigs? So, yeah. uh, so this guy, uh, he's also taking students in who he think he can learn something. So, you guys who want a real uh good teacher you have one here thanks monica yeah that's very kind uh what's your favorite of the games uh i do like pillow more than more i actually took a course uh, online here um yeah. on pillow because i think like pillow online is a game if you actually know how to play it you could uh make more if you know what i mean yeah. Because yeah. because it's so many people who like to gamble in PLO, so they just yeah. jump into it. So if you have like a little bit of knowledge of the game, I think you can yeah earn more though. Because in yeah. No Limit Hold'em, it's pretty hard field online now in in many tournaments. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um... But the thing is like. <laughs> No Limit Hold'em no is limit my hold favorite, and you never feel outlearned, you know? <laughs> so it's like so difficult to actually like, because if you study PLO, you have to put, you have to go away from the study, you take away from the study of No Limit Hold'em again, so. Yeah. Okay, I just bust that one. Ace King against Ace Queen, yeah. so I need to... Unlucky. No, fine. Actually, the only other table I'm playing at the moment is your table. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then I just gonna show it. Yeah, you can uh, show it. Yeah, I can show it. So let me just uh, make sure. Um, whoop. I'm just gonna fix the screen here. And there we go. Uh, I need your face here. So um, when when one thing is stopped in Discord, you have to fix the screen again. Oh right. That's the problem using using Discord. So uh, let me see. You're in the pot here now, right? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Um, uh yeah i think i had a good hand there i had two pair plus i had an over pair oh um, let me see okay there it is and i can move it up here now i have it on the screen so okay i'm all in in the fifth theater with nines against jack eight Ooh, good luck. Ooh, hoo, hoo. 
Oh, it holds on um, 26. Nice. Okay. Um, not sure what to do here with Dillo. I have so little base. Um, yeah. I'm just. Yeah, one of the hard things for me about PLO is I just don't know what kind of equity different hands have. Um, a lot of hands can look very good, but they're probably not. Yeah, uh, that's what one guy had to told me. Like, like when you see ace king or something, many people like L or queens. You see queens, but it's bad queens. Yeah. So it's like. Yeah. Yeah, you you so focus on two cards, but yeah, as a holding player, you just think about yeah, you can break it up into holding hands, but it doesn't really work like that. The fine with pillow though, if like here, it have started with antis, but for now it's not. So yeah, you can actually get back from very little, like I hope to do now. <laughs> yeah, don't have the best hand though, but. Okay, not good. Victory. Victory there. My strategy in in these two tournaments, because I don't really know the game, is when it gets short stacked, if it's if there's a spot where there's a lot of dead money in the pot or potentially dead money in the pot, and my hand looks even halfway decent, I'll just put it in pre flop. Yeah. Um, okay. And the the thing is like uh, okay, I'm only having pair of eights there, so I need to be very lucky to win there. Almost. Okay, now I best two tournaments at the same time. Yeah, I, I guess I can share my screen so we can we can watch how bad I am. You know. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I have aces here. I don't know whether it's good aces or bad aces, so we'll see. Yeah. Let me see. I'm gonna fix the screen here. Ooh. That one is going away. And we have this one. Okay, we have it here. Maybe I have one suit there, so. Yeah. This looks like a reasonable hand to me because it's double suited and connected, so I'm gonna play. Yeah. Okay, I have bottom pair, which doesn't feel very good. Bottom pair, lots of back doors. Yeah. The problem is with the, the double bad suited is though. like. Yeah. The your your, flush fl your flushes is not good. <laughs> no. So, but. <laughs> I do like to play like a hand like that. You can in position or something. So yeah. Okay, I have a suited ace, and okay, I guess I'll open this. Suited ace, an ace king, and I can hit the wheel. Yeah. Let me see. I need to fix the camera again. <laughs> I don't know why that one is fixed there. So, uh, what tool are you using mostly for studying now these days? Uh, GTO Wizard, uh, almost exclusively, because it's just so fast. You don't have to run your own solves. Yeah. Um, we actually have a, a deal with the GTO Wizard, so. Oh, you nice. Guys, you guys on stream, if you want ten percent or something, I could put on. Um, link in the chat. Um, there you get ten percent for a whole year, or you get ten percent for a month if you only want to try it. Also, yeah. Um, how about the ORC beta? I saw they changed something now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been actually using that quite a lot as well. Yeah. Um, the the big problem with HRC has always been that um, it uh, it doesn't take po it it didn't take post flop equity realization into account. Yeah. So you know it, it would it would it would suggest opening or defending very ugly hands. Uh, you know, like king four off or or whatever, um, which were not actually good because 
Uh, I thought I hit a straight here, but I don't. It's yeah. a two pair, three pair. Um, but but now it's for it's it's remedy that so hit the HRC beta does take post flop into account. Um, yeah. The thing about the HRC, what I like about it is like you can use different stack sizes. Yeah. You don't get that in, like. It's not very often everyone has twenty base, so it's like okay, exactly. what's the yeah. what's the stack like? We who is in risk here? You have to go for yeah. if you have eighty big blind, you are playing different than fifteen big blind. But yeah, so the, yeah, that's the thing that. I like about it. You can change different stack size and actually try to find out what you're gonna do. Yeah. And how wide you can jam or how, how tight you have to be if uh, yeah. the big line And you can change other people's and... ranges as well, which is very important. Like I, I, I did a session with a student before on satellites, but I was focusing on not just what the what the shoving range is, but how the shoving ranges change if the players behind her are too loose or too tight. Yeah. Um, 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 HRC is very good for that stuff. Yeah, but GTO Wizard is the one I use uh, for post flop and also for sort of general pre-flop spots but um for very specific spots yeah. especially with icm uh and it's you still need to use hrc yeah um, uh, i have actually a situation in the ept monte carlo on sunday now you have a what i, I had a situ situation i had oh, you have a situation yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure about it, but I think it's correctly though, because we were 16 left. Um, I was number two or three, something, but yeah. it was very close down to eight and there was seven tickets and we were 16 left. We had locked okay. up 260 euro and 15 get 530, like a ticket back for me. I, I qualified it for forty four dollars. So, um, and then small band jams nineteen point something bigs. I have pocket eights. Oof. And it's like. And you have a mini big one. Uh, I had like. I think I have sixty or something fifty fifty or sixty. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like he can jam pretty wide here. He's jamming wide, yeah, for sure. I mean, or at least he should be. Um, yeah, that far from the bubble, I, um, from the real bubble, I guess I'd call because also you're not going to be out if you lose. Uh, yeah, that that's what was my thought as well. So I did call though. Yeah. He has queen, queen five, queen five suited. So yeah, yeah. Well, if he's shoving queen five suited, then yeah, it's it's a it's a clear spot. Yeah, because it's like you you're not locked up even though you're two of whatever, but you're not locked up and um Yeah, it was like uh I will be a big chip leader winning that one, but because Yeah, exactly. I, you win you win your big chip leader. Even if you lose you're not out of it. So No, uh, I, I I lost and I was number eight out of fifth sixteen and then yeah. one people bust and then everyone was secure five hundred thirty. To the bubble though so yeah and then we was uh, like a lot of small stacks but uh we was 11 left i opened ace king suited and that again and i don't know i think there was the guy who tried to win the tournament he's jamming and that again plus two yeah. with 60 bigs he was a cheap leader and has a 50 big blind stack right behind him <laughs> Nice. So, um, and then we was 11 left and I called with Ace King Suter, he has Ace Queen and I, GG. <laughs> oh. Was two pots yeah. there going wrong. So, uh, yeah. it was close, but at least I, at least I qualified into it. So, yeah. So it was like a good pay <laughs> getting, uh, almost. 500 euro in plus though so now you have a nice hand 
I have a nice hand, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to fold it. Because I guess we don't want to see a diamond or Broadway card. Well, Jack or Queen would be bad. Okay. Yeah, nice, nice. Let me see. It was the major 50 euro. And this one as well. I forgot to get into that one. So the uh, Norwegian championships won't be in Ireland this year. No, it's going to be in Bratislava. Yeah, I don't which is a very nice place as well. But uh, you have been there. It's always been nice yeah. seeing the Norwegians coming every year. Yeah, I I think it's going to go back there because of JP and Pro that has the relationship and run it together and it's much more expensive i heard to have it in ireland yeah no 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 have it in bratislava it's much more expensive. oh really yeah oh, wow. uh, so you think it'll come back to ireland yeah okay cool it depends how it runs of course but i i'm pretty sure it's coming back yeah are are you it's going like, to Norwegian Championship in Bratislava? Yeah, I'm I'm going. Uh, um, I'm going the twenty third from Spain though, so I'm, I'm leaving no. for Spain in yeah when the SPC is finished actually the day after. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Spain then thirteen of March, and then I'm going to Bratislava from there and back to Spain for Easter and yeah. I don't think I'm gonna jump on a fly after maybe ten days in Bratislava going for the Irish Open, but you never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Irish Open is only one week this this year because um, I think they're expecting less because no Norwegians. Um, yeah. yeah, I think like maybe Keith and some of the Norwegians are going, but yeah, it's gonna be less people coming unfortunately unfortunately mm -hmm. i think like setting up the day two festival together is it's a bit long long time yeah. you know <laughs> yeah but i think it's uh also great that you can be both of them yeah do you have any other live uh trips planned no um i haven't haven't I, I would like to go to one event on Malta this year as well. Yeah. Uh and then I am waiting on Unibet Open. Yeah. Where that gonna be? No, I'm not the ambassador longer I'm gonna win, you know. <laughs> yeah, to be honest we don't know either, although on the on the most recent chip race or maybe the second last chip race, I think David and Barry hinted that it might be uh Bucharest in May, but we haven't heard anything official, so no. um Yeah, maybe it's uh I heard that Bucharest is good though because um what do do here? it's good uh, it's good because it's a lot of people playing there. It's like one of the biggest events, it's like six hundred players or something in the main. Yeah. Um, but it was it was a guy who told me like maybe it's the prom, like problematic with the like uh, they was supporting Putin or something. I don't know. I don't. In, I'm not into the politics. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think one of the problems uh, potentially with Bucharest at the moment is just the flights can be affected. Yeah. Uh, but um. Bucharest is always a very nice place to play. Yeah, I agree. Okay, we have a get shot here though. 
i Havanapaten med att de tjobbar om detta. Det är inte ett big line. Not hitting or getting cards in the SPC high here. Knock out. But on Monday I was down to four big line. I was really caught dead on the final table and the big stack was opening every hand. And I kept folding and folding because one... One stack was shorter than me, but when he double up, <laughs> I had four big men left, so <laughs> yep. then I have to do something. But then I got ace-queen, he open, I, I jam, he call, but it's 7-4 off, and hit the 7, <laughs> but I get yeah. a straight on the river. So. <laughs> I, I actually saw that on your stream, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was very exciting. Uh, that was the biggest reaction I ever saw from you, Monica, yeah. when you hit the river. <laughs> I didn't saw it. Again. I just saw the pipe come through me. I'm, wow, what happened here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Going from, oh. <laughs> okay. That was not good at all. Next one. Okay. I'm only left in the 2 euro SPC and the 50 euro. And I'm only left in the. The pillow. Oh, this is fifty on my hand. I, I you didn't are even close know. Close to the money, though. Yeah, we are close to the money. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Mm -hmm. I need to now. It soon breaks and. Mm. I just took a easy one and retweeted your tweet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ICM is very tricky in PLO tournaments because it's still the same, but the equities are closer pre-flop. So it can be it can be a situation in your bubbles where the chip eater can just open everything and nobody can play anything. Yeah. Um, because of the way the equities run, but at least you can't go all in. At least you can't just go all in every hand. So that's true. But I saw it. It, it wasn't PLO. It was another game. Um, the first year I was at the at the World Series, and Sean D was on the final table, and he had the massive chip lead. Um, and everybody else only had a few bets uh, in their stack, so he was just potting, opening every hand, and they just had to keep folding. Yeah. Now in the 50 major, I put a pressure on Nassim Tegel. I think I've seen him around a little bit. Nassim Tegelby? Nassim Taleb? Yeah. Yeah, he's a famous writer, but I don't think that's really him. That's just probably one of his fans. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm all in with King-9 suited, six big blinds, get two call, ace-10 and five, sneak the hit. Good luck. No luck. Five winning everything. Or is sixth place. I'm not sure if I'm most a long way from the money or not. Maybe a long way. How's the series been for now? Like overlays or something? I've been good or? Uh, there haven't been very many overlays that I've seen. Um, so yeah, it's been going well. The the schedule in general is just much better these days. Um, even outside series, uh, there's more big games on Unibet every night. So yeah. Um, um, shout out to more TBC for that. Nice. I was like, who's sending me money on Vips? But just. <laughs> Just Vips want me to pay money. <laughs> yeah. Vips is like uh, the Norwegians uh, uh, we use for sending money. Okay. Uh, like uh, Revolut, you can use it like Revolut. Yeah. Yeah. Or. Um... Yeah, it feels like everybody in Ireland has Revolut now. Yeah, we because... used. To, we are still using yeah. it, but. The problem is like, um, 
this one. Um, just doing a tree bet, but a little high tree bet, so. No, I may need to fold it. Oh, luckily for me, I get a fold. <laughs> Uh, now showing this table then that's cool mm, it's a lot of people streaming today i see yeah yeah i didn't think it was so many on wednesday but like in in norway now we have the what's called winter uh holiday right so but this like different weeks in where you live in Nor Norway. So in the West Coast now it's it, it's uh, one week holiday for schools. Yeah. Uh, and um, in the I don't know east side of Norway it was last week. So. Ooh. So, do you have any plans uh, for live events? You have been playing a live event in Ireland now. Last yeah, week. I was doing Dublin, the Dublin Poker Festival last week. Um, I probably won't play much before the Irish Open. Uh, I'm trying to take time to do the other stuff and catch up on coaching and all the all the book and stuff. Um, so, yeah, probably the Irish Open would be the next major thing I play. Yeah. Um. And then after that, I probably won't play too much before the World Series because um, I don't like going to the World Series feeling sort of tired already from playing live poker. So yeah, I can get there. For, are, you're not going to the World Series this year, no? No, uh, I was actually thinking about it last year, but then I found out that I, I, I'm actually going offshore 11th of June, July, 11th of July. I'm, I'm, I'm going offshore, so. It don't fit with my work schedule this year. I could go um, for the early ones though, but yeah, yeah, they have some good stuff early on. Um, but the stuff I mostly want to play, uh, the seniors and the main event are are second half. So yeah, I'll go, I'll go, <clears throat> I'll go over in late June. Yeah, uh, are David going this year or? David, David hasn't decided yet. Um, see, the, the, they have a new child, so um. Yeah. He's he's quite busy with that. I don't. He's yeah. No, he's very busy with that. I don't actually talk to him as much as we used to. Um, oh. but uh, we'll see how he feels when June comes. Yeah. I might go to Malta in uh, in around May as well. I think they have Battle of Malta and Malta Poker Festival around the same time. Yeah, I yeah. I was uh, the uh, Seb was sending me something. Uh... The dates. I know. I know the one of them. The one in April that was not yeah. working for me because then I'm offshore. So, so maybe in May. I was talking to Tora. Um, say we may maybe we could get some people, some grandma or something to watch the kids so we could go together for one week doing something because he's not going to the Norwegians either so mm -hmm. on Malta you can do like playing you can have some sun you can go for a good meal so <laughs> you have like everything yeah. <laughs> so yeah I do like Malta for that yeah I like it too because I can stay with David so I don't have to pay rent yeah, or, <laughs> yeah. Or it was so expensive living in London I'm like wow yeah this is expensive or yeah. The grips. Yeah. I, 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 and London used to be even worse. Uh, the first time I stayed in London was EPT 12 years ago. And I had a room which was about maybe one quarter the size of this room, if even. Yeah. Uh, and, and no window. Oh. And, uh, and it was costing £150 a day. <laughs> 100 and. 50 a day just for it was like it was like a large cupboard whoa we have a break i'm going to send my wife a message saying she will see me this evening yeah <laughs> she hasn't seen me i was playing live all last week and, oh. uh, 
And then normally after live, I take a few days off, but yeah. I told her oh, I have to play the SPC now for the next two weeks. So, <laughs> so you don't happy. want, you don't know, you're not going to see me for the next few weeks. Yeah. Uh, I could send her a message saying she can tune into Twitch and watch me there, but I don't think that's what she wants. No. <laughs> that's true. If you want to take you five minutes, you can. Yeah, no, I'm fine. <laughs> so uh, I need to go to the toilet myself. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to put the break on here or or you want to chat or uh, you can put the break on now. Yeah, OK.
Okay, now yeah. we're live again. Hello, we are back. Yeah, so I, I was just wondering what, what is Spielhagen? Spielhagen is like a group of Huga players, and some of them who was in, in the group was uh, is very well known, like Senkel, the 8th game pro. Or mixed Good. game pro, uh, his uh, name is Henkel on the on the stars, and uh, in the group now we are four left. Streaming poker, it's me. Uh, it's one guy called Yede Kungin. He's streaming mostly daytime, some Sundays. Uh, and then we have uh, Hagen. So like spill Hagen is like play playground, you can say, instead. Yeah. Uh, in English, it's like playground. Okay. Yeah, I would have guessed the spiel part, but not the Hagen part. Yeah. But uh, the thing is, like the guy who who uh, who uh, is behind this stream, his after name is Hagen. So <laughs> so it's like ah, game Hagen, okay. but you can say like. Uh, Hagen is garden on on English, so it's like garden, yeah. okay. It's like play garden if you make it over to English, though. Yeah, uh, we we was actually thinking because we was only a Norwegian stream before New Year, and then we go international after New Year this year. And we was thinking about uh, changing the name, but also people have known Spilhagen like international already also so mm. that's why we find out we're just gonna stay with the name though it, it's yeah. very norwegian <laughs> yeah it is uh so uh, one of the guy actually two of the guys in this group we are two holden players and two plo players so the two plo players is very good uh, especially one guy is in the hall of fame of uh in Norway, though, the Hall of Fame oh, of right. Poker. Yeah. He's uh, very good in pillow playing the high stakes. Yeah, it seems like there there's a lot of good um, mixed game players in Norway. Yeah. Compared to most countries. I think uh, uh, Senkel, uh, or Tobias Leknes is his name. Um, he, he uh, he and Pi, you know Pi. I know Pi, yeah. yeah I think they I'm have just... something on going on with BBC or something, making some mixed games uh, strategy or something. Right. I I'm not sure though. Yeah, I just think they have something going on. <laughs> yeah. Um. Somebody in the chat is asking <clears throat> me play playing plo tournaments is it for fun or for leaderboards or both it's mostly for leaderboards i have to say it's because i'm chasing the the spc leaderboard and obviously this is a tournament i can get points in i that's the only time i pretty much play plo when there's a unibet series on yeah. and um it's fair to say i really don't know what i'm doing here yeah, I'm the same like in PLO. I have learned a little bit from Hagen and Charvey. Uh, but still, I, I'm not very good. <laughs> yeah, we're very near the money now. So it's kind of PLO tournaments are weird too because. Uh, with no antis, you can survive for longer. Yeah. Than in, you, have than in a, a holding term. you have enormous ICM pressure. Yeah. The ICM is way bigger and you can't just go all in as well. So uh, unless you're very short, I could go all in here, but I don't think I'm going to. And the bubbles go the, at least my in my very limited experience. The bubbles sometimes go quicker as well because it's easier for other people to get all in because they. Yeah, people are like putting big stacks up, putting pressure on medium stack, and they follow his draw. Or, yeah. 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 Exactly. The variants are much higher in. And yeah. all all 
almost every time if you get it all in you are like 40 60 or something yeah yeah that's the thing like you're always going to get the price so i think when you're short it's really just trying to about find spots where there's dead money and you're and you're uh you're getting the price yeah you're number 17 of 18 three from the money though so yeah, yeah. See, especially in PLO, it's more like big stack actually uh big stack actually or uh or medium like uh, i see it often in plo that people are going through each other and some big stack yeah. are are yeah. bubbling and and uh, a guy with one big blind get it through <laughs> yeah I actually qualified in the scoop last year to a thousand euro pillow. Oh really? Yeah, from fifty five. Yeah. And then Sick. and then I actually had a pretty good stack and I did some something wrong. But like um Shadow the one in the group here is he's sending me a text and said, Now you have to be tight because of the ICM and I, I read that like Two minutes after I did this big mistake, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so I ended up like almost bubbling it. I did like two for, from the bubble or something, but then I yeah. did the same thing in the week up, and then I actually cashed it though. So it was good. <laughs> oh, yeah, I I definitely haven't joined the PLO team. This is only something I do when there's a EOS on or. Something like that. I've I've played it a couple of times live as well. Yeah. Usually small side events when I have nothing else to do. But I played one in Battle of Malta and I played one at an EMOPS once. I actually I was second or third, I think, in Portugal. Um oh. again, not really knowing what I was doing, but I have uh, played the Norwegians. That's eight hundred euro. Yeah, uh, and I played it like a lot in the eight games and the mixed games I played. So, the thing about PLO, you have to know this: the variance is so big. So, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So so it's like, in the start, I was like, oh, every time. <laughs> but, but yeah. When you actually learn how close equity runs. Yeah, then, yeah, yeah. Then you, you know, understand it better. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm looking at the leaderboard. Okay, it's 15 paid, and the guy in 15 has a lot more than me, so I don't think I can just fold. I'm open ender. Backdoor flush throw. My open ender is a bad one though. Okay, I think that's gonna fold. I think like if you have a pair there as well, you can go with. Yeah. But you you don't have the good. Just a very bad straight draw, yeah. Yeah, you have the bad one. I forgot to. I was actually going to take a mystery room story here. Oh, you have. I, you mentioned it. Thanks. Uh, let me see. Make one here. Mm, sorry. We are live. Come and join us on Twitch TV Spillhagen Poker. Okay, I need to take a new one. Take it this this screen, I think. We are live. Come and join us on Twitch TV Spillhagen. Have with me here Dara Kearney. Come on, join us. 
Okay, I guess a smile from you at least. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know whether they could hear me or not. Uh, no, they can't. Not on the... Not on the... Not on the... I have only you on my headphones, so... Mm -hmm. uh, somebody asking what's the difference between PLO and Texas holds and uh, well we have four cards in PLO um, and we have to use two of them and you sometimes see people make mistakes if they don't know that they have the ace of hearts but no other heart and they think they have a flush or yeah. they think they have a house because there's three cards on the board the same but they don't that's true okay we are all in in the ooh, almost ooh, look. almost winning uh 30 percent in the we have four big blinds left in the two euro so we busted in 45 mm -hmm. i was Taking in a link here to watch. Uh, whoop. I'll write too fast. So, so you, you, Davis is very. Very uh, busy these days, though. Very busy, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's an overlay in the 50 at the moment. I guess I'll jump into that. In the 50? Yeah, the 50. 50? <laughs> 50. You know why it's called the 50? No. Yeah, uh, it I is. 50, yeah. I can't remember who it was. It, it might have been Neil Farrell. Uh, he replied 50 once on Twitter to somebody who was asking when the answer was 50, but I guess 50 is the Scottish way of saying it. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it got, yeah, people got very, uh, it became a sort of a meme. People were saying 50. Yeah. Instead of 50. Okay, I'm now in the 50. So if I bust <laughs> this, if I bust my five big blinds here, no, it's, it's even less now, four and a half big blinds. Yeah. At least we'll have one more game to look at. I am the same tournament. I'm showing that one. Oh, this is interesting. He's checking all the way. He had some wheeze and I had two per river. I checked all the way also. And I think like I had a flush there. We'll definitely bet. It's like snap bet in there. Oh, he has tens. Putting a ten on turn. Nice. Mm. You also have the, the the low one, the five euro. Yeah. If, if you don't have qualified that one in the SPC. I haven't yet. No, I haven't qualified for that yet. I qualified for the twenty five, but I haven't qualified for the. Yeah. Euro. I and, do like and the, the new names on uh, on Unimet now. It's so much clearer, actually, what yeah. you're playing. Yeah. I'm all in first hand on the in the fifty. How many beats you started with? 15. 15. 15. Oh, I'm up against the same hand. Okay, big deal. Mm. Oh, mm. up to flush draw, though. No, boring. Maybe I should just, Maybe I should take, just, just, take just, do just do a 
Swipe a bit, let's swipe a bit, let's swipe a bit. He's a very bad He's ball, I didn't fire, fire, fire your robot. Ah, <laughs> uh, he has nine. I he have has nine. I have rush roll. Rush roll. Oh, hit it. Oh, hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Oh, Yeah. Sorry, guys, if you was on the stream. I know it's a bad call. I just want to get the 22 bigs running in the... You need, like, big stack in that one. Mm. Oh, you don't need it, but... It's, it's very advantageous to have a big stack, yeah. Yeah. Especially on day here, on day two. I think like it's gonna be not a long way from the money. Yeah. The day twos, but I think it's cool. Like Unimet started with the the base tournaments. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, we're on the bubble of the PLO now, so you're just gonna see me. Probably folding every hand, hoping somebody else busts. Yeah, you are number 16 of 16 and... Yeah. Want to see that? Some beast that get it in with aces against aces and... The other one get two pair and then you have cashed it. Yeah. <laughs> How are you you are on the leaderboard? Uh I'm I think I'm roughly top twenty in the in the high. Uh, I don't think I've even cashed any of the others. So um, No, but, not me either. Not today got, either, so Yeah. I got second yesterday, so um mm, that nice moved me up. I lost to uh Simon Wilson, Linus Lomo, as I said earlier. Okay, I think I just call here and hope he hope the big blind puts in <clears throat> a worse ace, but Ooh. nice one. I have uh, ace five on the button. I will raise and call the big blind and fold to the other guy if it comes round, but it doesn't. Hmm. You like playing chip stack, not the big blind. Sorry, say that again. You like playing the. Wow, that's a lot of aces there. Uh, yeah. You like playing the uh, big blind. Um, no, you 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 don't play the big blind stack. You you play the chips. Yeah. Um... Interesting. Hmm. I wish I knew more about him. <laughs> There's a lot of worse hands he can put in, I guess, and he doesn't think this is my board, so he doesn't have to think I have a jack here. I want to size up, I think. He can go with spades, king, queen, seven, eight. I think I have to call here. All oh, the draws miss. I've done the same yeah. thing. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, I check the turn there to make him think yeah, I, have, I have nothing, and then he shoves the river. I have to call. It's like... Uh, it's like also... You, it's like an online read when people are like, snap. Snap yeah. it all in over pots. It's like... In some low games, I 
experience it's the nuts but the the most times oh. i experience it's it's uh <laughs> it's, it's love. yeah it's a bluff yeah yeah, because the thing is, like, he's not really representing much either there because most of his jacks would probably have check raised earlier or, or played differently. And OK, he might have the six. That's probably just about the only thing he can have. But and especially when it's quick bet, like when they move all in really quickly, because um, if they have a value hand, they usually have to think about what size they want to use. Yeah. And, uh... In the 109 knockout yesterday. Mm. It was uh, after the money. Uh, but one guy I was three betting him uh, in the small bind with Ace King. He's calling Queen High Flop, Queen Nine, two hearts. I have no non hearts. I have a small C bet. He called. Uh, turn is blank. I checked. He bet very little. Like. The sizing didn't make sense at all because if he wants to jam the river, he should size higher and yeah. So I just yeah. called and all the drawn was missing on the river and he okay. I checked and he's snap jamming. Okay, I'm mm. sitting there with Ace Hydro, <laughs> so it's like, okay, how will he play his queen here? Will he do this with a queen? He will at least like take five seconds thinking about it. Yeah, so I'm like that's the thing. Yeah. So I'm like thinking yep. a lot and then, uh, ah, okay, using my time back, just go through scenarios, what will bet that little on the turn and just jam the river. It's like over pot there. Yeah. So I, uh, I decided to call with Lele, was left with 10 bigs if I'm, I'm losing, but I took, okay. took a big blind and I took a bounty and he has jack high. So. Yeah. So he had like, I think he had jack eight in hearts. Right. So you had a flush draw and a getter or something. Yeah. Yeah, and in the, in those spots where the where there are lots of draws, it's very easy for them to just be over bluffing because they bluff all their missed draws and. Yeah. Um... But sometimes you take. Sometimes you you read them wrong though. So. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you read them wrong, and and the most annoying feeling in poker is when you uh. When you call them because you know they're bluffing and they are, but you can't beat their bluff. Yeah. Because they're bluffing with bottom <laughs> air or something. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Okay, it was I like sure the one guy who has uh was really good in the hundred and nine, was deep in it and had forty bigs or something. I opened under again plus one. And the biggest stack, like, I think he was one of the chip leader, has a lot of bounties, free bet me on button, of course. <laughs> yeah. And it was like a small three bet, so like, oh, okay. I'm flipping here, or he has it like, he's just using his stack. I don't, so I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to four bet jam here. A snap called me with the aces and I'm out. <laughs> Sometimes they actually have it. <laughs> Sometimes they have it, yeah. Even on the button. <laughs> the button, yeah. I think, is like you get most paid off with good cards because people are yeah. thinking you are using the button all the time. So Yeah. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Mm. Let's see here. Uh, Monica, stop fucking up the stream. Nice, it's fixed. What was it? <laughs> what? Maybe it's a meeting or? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, two two guys all in with ten bigs. I have eights. Eights. Yeah, now up against five and six. Sixes. Mm. And we hold. So nice, nice one in the five euro. Yeah. 
lows, uh, face, face low. Is it that what it's called? They were uh, they were already all in ahead of you, or you were? No, uh, the first guy uh, go all in ten bigs in uh, yeah. under the gun. How then you went all in. It was eight players, yeah, and I was in uh, mid middle position. I just called, yeah. and the other guy go all in behind me with ten bigs. Yeah, I called. Yeah. Uh, he he had a smaller stack in the first one also. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You usually uh, when when there's two when it, Two people are all in relatively short. Usually sixes is the worst hand that's a call. Yeah. Lucky for me, no one had like a big stack behind there. Yeah. Oh, you was one guy though, but if he jamming, I'm, I'm out. This one guy with 150 bigs and I had 60, no, 50. Mm. Now we took a ace king in the fifty. <laughs> the fifty. Fifty. Oh, you're in the fifty as well. Yeah, I was How in there before the you. Actually, you were in. Yeah, I came in at the last minute only because there was an overlay. Yeah. <laughs> Completely shameless. <laughs> the great ambassador. Oh, it's overlay. I'm jumping in. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, save you in about some money. Yeah. I don't think it's been too many overlays on the new schedule. No, I think midweek, I think Wednesdays are probably office because it's far from the weekend. But in general, there hasn't been, no, it's been very good. I saw on some day stream, I was streaming the, when I'm playing daytime, I have like one tournament I'm playing on Unibet. Hmm. Uh, and that's the 12 o'clock tournament, a 25 euro knockout. Right. And is that overlay? Um, the first day I, I streamed it, was it last week or something? Or the week before? Uh, it was overlay, like over 10 people. Yeah. Uh, the day after it was not overlay at all. So maybe it's helping <laughs> showing it on stream <laughs> or something, but. Yeah, 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 very good. So, I haven't yeah. seen it overlay after, but I haven't played it too many times because now I'm playing on the evening this and next week. So, yeah. Oh, uh, I have a kid crying. Mm. I need to go. I will be right back. Just have to yeah. sit out. How can I sit out actually? Mm. Sit out in the tournaments. Um. Oh. Coo -coo -coo. I need to find the. So, not my. Same like going to be killed. Start time like automatically like that. So, um, ooh, we are actually covering the not not here. Ace kings keeps. Stop giving me hands, I need to go. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're popping two pair there. Mm. Now.
It always happens. You register something just because you're there's an overlay thinking it probably won't last very long anyway because I've got 15 big blinds and now suddenly I'm second in chips. I'm going to be here for a while. No worries. Something special happened. It's uh, the smallest one is uh, she. Her nose is so she can't breathe through her nose. So. Oh, oh no, we thing. She's like. Uh, how how old is she? Oh, she's turning three in the summer. Mm. So they are growing up. I was pregnant with her on Unimet Open Dublin. Right. Right, right before the racing nines here. Right before the uh, flipping Pandemic. nines against King Jack here. We hold. Uh, right before the pandemic, yeah, yeah, it was like <laughs> that was right before the pandemic, <laughs> also. I think like Henry was like locked up in his room or something. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were, we, we were joking that Henry was the first case in Ireland because, um, we hadn't heard of anybody, and then he uh, he, he rang that he was sick and. I think the police turned up and told him he had to stay in his room. Yeah. <laughs> Patient zero. I was like uh, traveling offshore nine days after. And the, the day I was coming to the airport for the helicopters, they like, have you been traveling the last 14 days? I'm like, yes. Where have you been? Uh, Dublin. Okay, then you can go in. And then I was like... <laughs> When I come offshore, it's like, anywhere you have been out of country, you have to stay home. You don't have to love. It's like, okay, but it's nine days since I come home. So it's like, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. You're going to lock me in on my room here out in the, in the yeah. rig like, like that. And then, okay, it's like nine days since you were there. So it was fine for me. But there was yeah. another one who come home like two days ago from a boat in the, I don't know where she had been, but she had been on a cruise ship. So maybe more, more, uh, yeah. So she was like staying at the room and was sent home again <laughs> after, yeah. after one day. Yeah. And how, how was the pandemic in Norway? Was the lockdown severe? Uh, I think I missed it because I was offshore the first 14 days because I heard like people saying they see nobody in the start, like yeah, shops were closed, everything. Mm -hmm. But the restaurant and everything like that was closed very long though. Yeah. So it was pretty hard for restaurants and 
owners like that and then they like okay we we closing down because we don't have a vaccine and then we get a vaccine and people was vaccine and then they opening and people are starting to get uh, christmas uh, you know with work going to restaurants eating a lot and in december the restaurant are on our uh, okay I'm all in in the 50, uh, for 50 with Ace King, I guess Ace 5 and Ace 8. So Ooh. I can triple up here. Yeah. Uh, I, and we we split it all three. <laughs> you split it? Yeah. It was two pair on the board, two, two, four, four, okay. ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I was I was saying it, but the lockdown again in December. Yeah. So uh, then the restaurant hit this again, like they was ready to serve people alcohol. A lot of people coming in, and <laughs> then then it closed down again. So and then we have the vaccine and everything. So. Mm. Ace queen here. And nine jack. Okay, we are gonna jam this one. Is queen. We are blocking the straight here. Open under again. Mm, so of course, he has eight there. So the river factor. He had the lower straight. Question for Doak. Say we have a bank roll and not. Uh, rolled it for 50 tournaments on Unibet, but I think we have a reasonable row of say 15 in them. How do we calculate how many flips can we play given that the rake free and either break even to plus EV technically in if we flip five times for 10 V both in should we cap the number of flips we pay today? Again, mm. that was a long question. I need to write it again. Just <laughs> yeah, no, I can I can see it here in the chat. Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting question. Um, <laughs> um. I think from a purely bankroll point of view, it doesn't really matter uh, whether you cap it or not, because each one is the same. You know, it's the same proposition. Well, even if you lost five already, number six is still the same as as the first one. Um, the fact that you have to play the 50 tournament and you're not rolled for it is is a consideration, but it's not it's not a reason not to play them because you can always take shots like bankroll management bankroll management really applies to like if you're not broad to play 50s it means you can't play 50s not nothing but 50s and because you'll go bust if you a lot of the time if you do that but say you're only rolled for 10s or whatever it's still fine to play a 50 now and then so long as you're just you know it's a shot basically um in terms of the flips, I'm not sure. The, the, the maths is super complicated there because essentially the flip is a satellite to a bigger tournament, but you're not rolled for the bigger tournament either. Um, so I think if you were following absolutely strict bankroll management, you shouldn't even be playing the flips. But well, as I said, like it's fine to take a shot because it's not like you're going to go bust just because you, 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 you play a few flips because um, you're going to play other stuff as well. Oh, you think about the flip tournaments, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like look like bullet will overlay on you, but two bullet. You overlays tonight. Maybe Wednesday's the night when 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 uh, Unibet overlays. I'm I mean in the bullet. I don't, I don't usually play on on a. On Wednesday. Wednesday, no. Uh, not me there. I'm definitely gonna bring Monday up. I see, I see you said Monday Monday is the day, and now I have two win tournaments on Monday. <laughs> so. Monday Mon Monday's a great day to play because uh, lots of the regs take them off unless they have a day to do. Uh, even 
but I'm going to play it there after tilted after Sunday. So yeah. Uh, yeah. if you can play well on a Monday, Monday is a great day to play. That, I agree. I agree, I agree, but it's like we say, Sundays are never great, they, there's Monday, it's going to be great. Yeah. yeah. Often you go into sun Monday when you're actually playing Sunday, <laughs> so yeah. also, yeah. and all the day twos are on Monday, so. Yeah. Let's see. Find something in the I forgot to put on some background. Music could be nice to have it. Just something quiet. Is it playing now? Oh, I fucked that up yesterday. I need to use which laptop. Uh, for everyone who's not in the competition, just type in. Uh... Can you please say a word for me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, was it a ticket or something? I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, there what was, it was a ticket. Yeah, type it in. Uh, I don't know what this uh, this one is. If you look at the chat, I don't know what that uh, what's calling now. Uh, in the wind, it's called Utopstein. <laughs> 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 so uh, this. <laughs> this uh, I'm not gonna try to explain it. <laughs> Sometimes, like. You yeah. have the words in your mouth and just yeah. like it disappear. <laughs> disappear. Yeah. Uh, okay, in the 40, we have 10 bigs. We defended the big with jack 9, the flop is jack 8, 7, rainbow, 5 on turn, check, check. Um, I'm gonna bet 3 fourth on turn. Uh, he's jamming me all in. He might have an overpair or something. Oh, he actually plucked it. 10, 10, uh, 10, 9, 10. Opening middle position. Some buster in 30 place. Okay, yeah, the bullish is definitely overlaying. So I guess I'm going to register the bullish. Is it 25? I mean, told my wife I was definitely going to be finished early today. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, now I find myself in two tournaments. Yeah. That's good for the stream, though. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Are you still in the bullet? Mm, the bullet, I mean, I had 33 yeah. bigs. Or 4,990. Yeah. But the 50, I, I uh, bested now. And now I'm showing the EGC here. Mm. Click change that to. I don't have right enough names. It's not going to be like for Unibet opens anymore, right? They go no, away from um, it? Or... I think there's only going to be two. Two, yeah. Uh... As far as I know, and but they're going to try and be involved with other tournaments like well, they already did stuff like the Belgian Poker Championships and the IPO in Ireland and other stuff. But I think they are looking to expand that, so they'll they'll spot, they'll be involved with other tournaments as well, but not they the are Open. involved with the festival as well. I think yeah, like the festival. Going, yeah, yeah it's, I think it's a festival going satellite on Unimet. Yeah. Think I actually cheated one a satellite on Unimet on that one. The festival. 
but I do love the main event in the in the Unibet Open, though I always done it. Yeah, oh yeah, beautiful tournament. But, yeah. but the thing is, like a curse, <laughs> something happened when you get a get down ambassador. <laughs> I haven't cashed a single one, and before that, I think I had three cashes or something. Yeah. Uh, you were pregnant in where was was it Copenhagen as well? Yeah. I have been praying it two times and both have been at the Unibet Open 7. Both times at the Unibet Open, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, that was actually pretty hard, that one. Yeah. Because I didn't sleep very much that weekend. Uh, uh, because then I was like seven months pregnant and yeah. Uh, and that was in, I think it was in the end of May or something. Yeah. Yeah. And she came early, so I actually she was born like one month and ten days after or something. All right. <laughs> yeah. Well after that. Yeah, so it was not long. But I, I wake up in the evening like you know, the stomach was like bouncing, I don't know what it's called. But uh, it was pretty hard, like I couldn't sleep yeah. and then I started uh, nose bleeding and <laughs> yeah. so yeah. That's terrible, yeah. Yeah, so, so the final day was not great. Like, day number two, when you're going to play down to the fin final table, they actually stopped it like two or three o'clock on, on the night because it was dragging out. Because it's going to start up again 12 o'clock or something. So we started like 14 people or something on the final day. Yeah. So we was two table left um yeah but uh, not the best uh sleep before the <laughs> table but had a cool or uh, kings against aces Oof. yeah so but i think it was okay something i will something hands i was like going through afterwards i was like okay where is my guts to jam the river there with seven high <laughs> yeah i had a hand or, or or like put on the break on on the turn so the 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 was actually against the guy who won mm -hmm. he put he pick up aces for the second time um he had it in, in big line, did a small three, but I call with seven, six suited in position. Uh, flop the flush draw, and the flop was like some king ten something. Um, and and then he checked, and I bet small. He called, checked again, turn. <laughs> I think he picked up some draws on the turn on my. I'm I'm not sure, but. Uh, the interesting was like, I bet again, but small again. Like, I think I put up a perfect jam on the river, but <laughs> when I see his face, when I check back on the river going blank, it's like relieved that the aces hold. So I think oh. maybe if I'm jamming the river there, he will fold the aces. Yeah. Because yeah. like, I have so many, like, I think the flop was something like king king 10 and the nine on turn or something so, so interesting mm -mm -mm. but you learn from the situation and and then yeah. you, you think more yeah, about sure. it in the future that's the most important thing i think like if you do something like try to learn something out of it if you do something bad try to learn something out of it do something good try to learn it yeah yeah no that's a great attitude yeah so it's like um uh, it's like i had a discussion with uh a girl uh, some days ago like she, she said like i know i'm playing ladies differently and i will in other tournaments and it's like in small tournaments i don't care if i'm mm. coming on seventh place or first because the price jump are like if it's 500 on top 
It's like, yeah. I'm always going for the first, she said. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I understand. It's like normal thinking that. But, but the thing is, like, when you come to a final table with big price jump money, you actually know how to play it if you play the same, even if it's yeah. a small tournament. So Yeah, that's a very good point. It's just practice over and over again. Like, at the start of my career, I only played um, single table tournaments. Uh, and th and that was actually a big advantage to me when I moved into multi-table tournaments because when you get to a final table, it's like a single table tournament and the more practice you have, the better it is. Yeah. Um, and my mentality is like the stakes don't matter. It doesn't matter whether it's a free roll or or a 10K. I, I just want, I just always play the same way. Yeah. Um, I, I just want to, f to make the best decisions. I don't really think about where I'm coming in the tournament or how big how big it is or how, how much money there's for us. Like my biggest ever live result was in Vegas um, at the WSOP. Uh, and I remember at the start of the final table, I looked up at, to, at to see what the money jumps were. But I but the amounts didn't really go into my head. It was just the sort of, you know, yeah. the purport between first and second. Because when there was five or six left, one of my friends asked me, how much do you have locked up now? And I said, I don't know, because I didn't. That, that information wasn't important to me. The only the only important thing was that it was a fairly flattish payout structure, so that was going to decide my strategy. Yeah. But I didn't actually know what first prize was or what sixth prize was or any of the other things because you shouldn't really be thinking about the money anyway. That that can it can affect you in two ways. Like if the money, you know, like if it's a small tournament, you don't care about the money, then you're not taking it seriously and you play badly. If yeah. it's a big tournament and you're thinking too much about the money, you can actually get too scared and too tight. Then. Um, that's so true. yeah, should... that's true. I never really think about the money. I I did the same thing in Copenhagen. I didn't know the price jump at all. Yeah, it's like a... I, ha I had no idea what was in first place. No idea yeah. anything. So it's yeah. like okay, I get what I get. Like <laughs> yeah, that's exactly the way you have to approach it. So, I I know I've it's not every time I can go by the rule I know for a fact like when I play the free rolls online it's like mm. okay it's whatever let's yeah go, let's go so I, I know for a fact if that will be a, a normal tournament I may fold it but because yeah. it's a free roll I'm like okay let's go yeah. so uh, I know for a fact there I have to work a little bit about uh, about that but now I'm like okay it's a 33 dollar tournament okay I'm gonna try to do my best even if i'm just cashing it's like okay you're cashing 41 dollar uh, in the long run when you're playing you need more caches to survive and then you get the big one so you keep going right because you can't get the big ones all the time yeah so you you also need the small caches to to actually have your bankrolls they stay yeah nice. absolutely yeah yeah like the big ones are the eye catching ones and they make uh they, they obviously do make a big difference but you have to keep getting into position to give yourself the chance and uh and and also cashing for smaller amounts so that your bankroll keeps keeps healthy yeah, yeah, yeah. i agree i think like i think like uh, uh many people who don't play a lot online i didn't know it myself before how how variance is so effective like yeah you need to play a lot of tables and yeah. then you have a lot of small caches a lot of busters yeah. and then you get some big ones mm -hmm. so yeah and if you're running pretty hard you get lots of big ones <laughs> yeah yeah you have those periods you have all those periods you have the periods where you're bubbling a lot you have periods where you're not cashing at all you have periods where you seem to be cashing a lot but not but it's just yeah, it's just that's the way randomness works. Yeah, um, it's it's. Um... But I think like you have to play a lot of online. Like people who yeah. are only play live, like I did myself before. It's like yeah. the volume are so little. Like you, you feel yeah. you're playing good or you you're running hard. Yeah. Like the volume are so little. So yeah, so. yeah. I think live. I think players who only play live never really fully understand variance because. The samples are so small and they see some people doing really well and they think they're brilliant and they see other people who don't seem to be cashing anything and they think they're terrible but but a lot of the time it's just the variance um which is 
is is, is dictating the results in the short term. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. You see, like uh, last year, I I thought I played a lot of tournaments, and then I ended yeah. up yeah. playing sixteen, and then I yeah. found out how how actually how hot I was running about this sixteen yeah. tournament because I cast seven out of. 16. Oh, that's sick. So that's yeah. pretty sick. And that then I sick. and then I actually had uh, a fifth one in the heads up in Dublin. I have mm -hmm. a fifth one in the fixed limit in Dublin. So mm. and then I have uh winning the heads up in Norway. Yeah. Uh um, well, yeah, that was that, that that was a huge one, yeah. And I had a, another final table in Dublin. Yeah. And then I had uh in Malta I had a final table in the first event, the opener. And then I had a winning the ladies. <laughs> you really had a hot year. I can, and like you say, it's only 16 tournaments, so it's like yeah, a Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you had all of those results, so it's like a very hot Sunday. Yeah, it was uh, absolutely. Well, because I was like, oh, I, I didn't, I played a lot last year and I actually didn't play a lot of tournaments. And yeah. then I like, okay, how many cash hits they have? Seven. Wow, that's that's a big one. Actually, just yeah. live having seven out of sixteen. Yeah. So... Yeah, that the heads of win was particularly sick because you beat you beat so many of the top Norwegian male players on the way to to winning that one. Yeah, that's the most exhausted winning I ever had. I think. Yeah. Because heads up is so exhausting because you're playing every hand pretty much. So. Yeah, you do, and you have to be on all the time. Yeah. I I think it's I think it's very funny. Uh, but also when when you're doing so many matches after another, it's pretty hard. But I think yeah. like I think like for me, I have play, played a lot of spinning goes. I played a lot of hexapros. I'm used to playing a lot of hands like short stack or even not short stack, but playing a lot of heads up. So I think like yeah. that have been helping me a lot about my heads up games though. Because yeah. I, the one uh, in, uh, in Norway told me like, they was like interviewing me and the Andreas yeah. Heywald before the heads up final match. And they say, uh, Heywald only had, on Hand of Mob, only had lost, he only had one second place or something from yeah. his, from his winnings or heads ups games. And yeah. uh, then they was looking at me, and I I only have victory, and never a second place. <laughs> so, yeah. So um, I think one of the reasons help me uh, helping me on on my heads heads up games, hexa pros, spinning goes. Yeah, it, it seems it seems it's, like you 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 you're good at those because you you also had a deep run. The Norwegian championships before, right? In in City West, I think you did well in the. It's a tournament as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was fifth in that one, or yeah. fifth to eight was like uh, quarterfinal. Yeah, yeah, I best the quarterfinal, so I cashed that event as well. So, and I had had some, not, I had some uh, head sub tournaments there before. I haven't gotten very great. Yeah. I never forget the ones when I get get four of kind and lost the straight flush <laughs> heads up. <laughs> That's a sick one because you, yeah. Yeah. It's like not very often you get none of the, those hands in like uh, No Limit Hold'em and then you get in a heads up match, you get it. <laughs> yeah. Are you guys near a winner winner chicken dinner? I do have a chicken here though. You can see it on the camera now. There's a chicken with a <laughs> it's a chicken lamp. With a chicken lamp. <laughs> yeah, it's a chicken lamp. I won it on Yeva King stream though. There was a guy who donated it. They they looked at awful lamps. And then they find the chicken lamp and I was uh the one guy who won it he donated it to me but i haven't get light in it yet so okay. it's like uh, a egg coming out of his butt 
look very oh, it's very funny you have to see on the stream if you have a stream up you can see it in like yeah, two minutes in, in three minutes yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice nice little look i did uh, i i made a like uh i made like a unboxing thing when i get get it <laughs> made a chicken dance music on instagram <laughs> very good mm. Oops, still in the bullet still in the five euro spc it will be nice actually to go through that one yeah, I'm still in the bullet as well. I've called an all in. Maybe let's see if I can quickly change my screen. Yeah, nice. I have never have a guest on who does that, Dara. That was pretty nice. You're like switching <laughs> screens there, showing what uh, actually is coming on. <laughs> okay, three ways. Wow. God, it's so small I can't fold. Ugh. <laughs> Six to one. My good. I don't think I'm good here. I'm about to see if this is a terrible fold. Yes, it's a terrible fold. Yeah. What's he Ooh. doing? But I, I thought maybe he he done it with a draw though. I didn't a, know. A draw is possible, yeah. But um, I I thought maybe yeah. because it was bit betting like that, it was like ten, so, yeah, ten queen or a flush draw or something like. Very bad pair though. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it don't no make pair, no any draw. sense like doing that. This guy's already all in as well, so it's. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Queen high, trying to win. <laughs> <laughs> well, you won the side pot anyway. Yeah. That's true. We are number 11 out of 44, and the, the one we're showing here, that's the face slow. 5k guaranteed. The day two are going to be on. Thanks for following. I don't gonna pronounce that name, I think. More, uh, I know, I'm not. Please, 54. Welcome to the stream. I'm um, Waka Waka and have with me Dara here. Playing some poker at Unibet SPC. The series going on there now. Dara has told me he's gonna play for the Little War, so I may yeah. be quitting that. I did try now. I might for quit after. after. <laughs> Yeah, I might quit it at the weekend. I'll see where I am after the weekend. And Yeah, um, me as well. Me as well. It's difficult to play every day. Yeah. It is. But like like the first week now, I'm, I can see where I'm at at Leaderboard because Tora is offshore, so I, I, I'm alone every evening. Okay. So it's, He works offshore as well? Yeah. Okay, I didn't realize that, yeah. He does so. So he's offshore, coming home on Monday. So okay, I can see then if how I'm doing. And then yeah, we are going to Spain next Monday after that. So where where in Spain? Mm, in uh, Albir, it's Alicante. Okay. Like uh, like uh, Benidorm, ten minutes yeah. from Benidorm. We're gonna be there for yeah. me and the kids. Gonna be there for uh, yeah. How long it's gonna be? It's over a month, I think. The kids yeah. are gonna be there, but I'm gonna go to Bratislava and they go, it's go directly flight from Alicante to Wien, and then I have to drive one hour to Bratislava or something. Okay. Where is your favorite place to go on holiday? Mm. <laughs> are you are you uh, many favorites? With kids or not? <laughs> <laughs> it, well, you have kids now, so with kids, I guess. Yeah. Um. Uh, I think it's like uh, I do love Spain. We actually are thinking about moving there from after the summer now. Yeah. As uh, 
I search uh, the oldest girl into a school. So I'm waiting. Like, maybe I get the answer now. Thanks yeah. for subscribing, Elastool. Seven months. Yeah. Very, very, very nice. Thanks. Uh, so we are thinking about going there for one year at least, trying because my family have a. Thanks for following Rock Roman. We are. My brothers moved there, and uh, my mother and father has a house there as well. So they are yeah. there are a lot. So. Yeah, Spain is lovely. Yeah. And it's very close. Like, if you want to go to Real Madrid, it's like two hours uh, with train, you are there. Yeah. So it's not long with train either. So. Yeah. No shark attack. <laughs> it was a guy open. A shark attack open and COVID vaccine goes all in with 10 bigs. Call the king queen in big. Um, I think it's okay though, but because he is opening in low jack. Mm. I will have a lot of flips there. A lot of flips. But I also have a nice deck, so I probably have fold. <laughs> Going down to 20 bigs, if not. Yeah. Are you still in the 50? Hello. 50? <laughs> yeah, I'm still in the 50. Yeah, I'm 8 of 22. Right 8 of 22 now. Are you still in? No. no. Not anymore. In the bullet, I'm still in. Bullet. I'm short in the bullet now after after that terrible fold. Yeah. <laughs> The queen high fold. Yeah. Sometimes th things happen and I can't understand it, and I I, th I don't think it's meaning I'm understanding. It. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people are like to troll with the with the guys with special figures on the universe. That's true as well. Yeah, no, that's definitely a factor. Yeah. Um. It's a factor live as well. When I play live in Ireland, it's completely different from where I play, when I play live in say, Vegas. In Vegas, people don't care, but, yeah. but in Ireland, there are some people who just want to do weird stuff. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> I know what you mean. I think, like, it's actually for myself, I like going somewhere playing with not a lot of Norwegians, it's good for me. Yeah. Um, because nobody knows who I am, so it's like I'm going under the radar and I actually see... I think like... Yeah. Let, I have to be careful how I say it, but some guys are like, okay, you are a woman, you can't play. Yeah. So yeah, no, I, was, I was actually going to ask you about that. Because, yeah, and um, I ex last time I experienced that was uh, was in was in Malta actually, in the mm -hmm. main event. Oh, sorry, guy, I I took out a short stack with eight seven suited against his kings in the bullet. <laughs> Yeah, so I did actually experience that one. It was, it yeah. was so funny. <laughs> I'm just sitting there, okay, I have my bottom set here. I'm just betting and betting. <laughs> then I did a small race on the rear yeah. and just folded. <laughs> yeah. And it, he did it every pot against me. Every pot. Well, there, are, there are guys like that, yeah. They, it, it, like, they just can't lose a pot to a woman. It's just... Yeah, it's not that, was, that was so funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had a friend in America who plays live and she's and she said there were there were two types of like men who play badly. There's the men there's men who think that women never bluff um and and they just fold every time she bets and then there's the men who just can't lose to a woman ever ever so <laughs> so they'll never fold. Yeah. Um 
um, she she said she had a good. She if she wasn't sure which type a guy was, she usually her her trick was to ask him who he voted for in the last election. And if he voted for Trump, he was usually the kind of guy who couldn't bear bear losing a pot to a woman and and just would never fold. Yeah. But if he said but if he said Biden, he was the other type. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice. The I like that one. Actually, I do like that one. Yeah. It's a perfect example, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's obviously a generalization, but it's it, it, it works most of the time. Yeah. Thanks for follow. Uh, Joachim, Rini, um, hi Dara. I read your end game poker strategy ICM book. I have helped me a lot to become a prophet. Uh, prophet. That's I? great to hear. Yeah, yeah thanks very much. Jeffrey. Yeah, that's really good to hear. Yeah, that was our third book, and um, uh, we, we we're going to do another book on ICM at some point, just on post slap ICM. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I see. I see him. I think for tournament players, I, I, I think I see him as the most important one skill you can have. Yeah. If you don't understand I see him, it's very difficult to be profitable. I agree. I agree. And 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 the thing is, like the price jumps are so insanely heavy on a final table. Yeah. yeah. If you make even a small mistake on a final table, what what seems like a small mistake, it can actually cost you a lot of money yeah. when you work it out. Um, whereas, like even a big mistake at the start of a tournament won't be as much because it's just a small fraction of your buy or it's a fraction of your buy-in. But a a fairly small mistake on a final table could could be five or six buy-ins. Yeah. And if you think like online, how 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 that's affect you because yeah you play so many tables and then you There's get many tables, so yeah. and then you get like okay now i yeah. have a big final table yeah that it's so important to actually oh. winning that or get a highest price there because all of the other buy-ins you're gonna have you get a yeah. new final table but if you're yeah. playing live you don't often get the final table, so you don't often get the final table. Yeah, and and sometimes you know somebody will play fairly badly, but they'll still win the tournament. And yeah, I'm flipping in the bullet for all of it. Yeah, Hit but me. over a large sample, we were talking about this earlier that you have to play a lot of tables oh. online for the variance to balance out. And over a large sample, it becomes much more important that you don't make mistakes on final tables or on bubbles when uh, there's a lot of money at, at stake. Yeah, and that will make, that will make a huge difference to your to whether you're profitable or not at the end of the year. That's that's very true. And the thing is, like people who only playing live, it's like the, the mistake you're doing live is hurting even more because yeah, you don't get the same volume no. playing the same tournament. But also, you for me, it's like. Playing a live event, it's like you also have higher buy-ins than I will have online. I can play one, yeah. one buy-in yeah. for a uh, uh, live event, and then I can, for the same amount, they can play hundreds <laughs> online, like because you have bigger. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hopefully, I don't lose this one. I I, I busted a bullet. Um with ace queen oh, against no. deuce hit the ace uh ace king against ace king here but he get the straight on the river he has pocket deuces oh. um, yeah nice to get so good feedback from people reading your books yeah, that's always really nice because um, uh, that's what get you going, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's much more uh, because I, 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 like, I have friends who have written books, and the books, poker books, don't usually sell very many copies. So 
you can often write a book and get absolutely no feedback or almost no feed or almost no feedback. Yeah. But we've gotten very good feedback on all our books. And that's always like when people, you know, have read the satellite book and then they qualify for a big tournament and they tell us that's always a great feeling or. Yeah, um, the, the or, satellite book helped me a lot, actually, about yeah. satellite thinking differently. Yeah, so I learned a lot about that one. Yeah. Or the the guy who won the uh, WPT World Championship in in um, in the win in, in December, he actually stopped me in the corridor to say how much he'd gotten out of my books, and oh. that is a great feeling as well. Yeah. I have a screen here, no action, no big blind, sizing it up on Queen Nine Seven. It's, it's a board who connects a lot of draws from big blind, I think. With a flush draw there as well. 9 7. Big blind have like 10 8. Uh, 7 6. Uh, 7 8. Jack 10. I don't think it's. I, I think it's great. I think it's okay to size up there. What do you think about that? Sorry, what was the uh, hand again? Just. I see you had a hand yourself. So. Yeah, uh, well, I have to call it off a choose here because I have two big blinds. Yeah. yeah. Did you catch the pillow? I didn't know. I actually bubbled it. Oh. Uh, and and really annoying. I was so much shorter, I thought I had to go with my hand. And uh, so I did. And then same hand, somebody else bu bubbled on another table mm. or busted on another table. But he had more chips than me. So yeah. I ended up. Yeah. That's the end of the bullish. Yeah. So what was your hand? Um, I had ace queen open and again, and the big man call, and the flop was queen nine seven. Uh, two diamonds. No yep. dam. I have no diamonds, so I, I decided that's a great flop to size up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's so many draws there, and so many turn cards that will devalue your hand. Yeah. Wow, you're starting showing this table right to the kings. Yeah. <laughs> In the bigs, of course, and you have a yeah. damn. <laughs> Had a lot. I played a lot of pots with this guy, and I think he might have blocked me on a few rivers. I don't know what I. I, I didn't I notice how he got as well. Yeah, but we're obviously calling here. Okay. Yeah. No sweat. No sweat. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice turn. Seeing that one. I don't want to see a fiber or some making a straight draw. Yeah. I think like the, the funny thing is like our brains, like we talked about earlier, like I'm saying oh, I'm going into GG at all. That's the that's that side tilt me because I run so bad there. <laughs> yeah. And and that's also like when we lose sync parts, like when we get bad beats we remember the bad beats when yeah we don't remember the happy things like when no. we bad beats other people they say it. yeah it's so funny with the human brains there yeah no we remember the the yeah we're 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 programmed to be sort of pessimistic and just to remember bad stuff more than good stuff and it's the same when like if you make content if you make a podcast or a video and five people say oh i really like that that was great and then the sixth person says oh that was terrible it's the worst thing ever it, that that person you remember them much more than the five people who said they liked it yeah, um, yeah. it's kind of messed up but uh yeah, when you get is. over it, it is. yeah it's, I, a, it's like i used to find when i was coaching students and you know they didn't know what they were supposed to shove on the button and i tell them okay when you've got 10 big blinds on the button um if you've got any ace you shove and and they'd come back every almost every time they come back and say, "Oh yeah, I did that, and I ran into Ace King, or I ran into Ace Ten, or I ran, yeah. you know, uh, because they remember all those times. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember the time when people just folded. No, it's the same thing. You can get ten comments, like you said, and one of them yeah. on, are are bad. Then you remember the bad one, not the nine good ones. Yeah, so. yeah. I did shove Ace King thirty six bigs from. Cut off open two and a half, but the big line has 115 bigs and very active. So he was thinking a lot there. So 
if I flattered, he might 3-bet so he can 4-bet all in, but... Try to get a big stack in this one. Opening again. Oh, falling horse. So the next <laughs> next week or the Sunday you're gonna play the SPC, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna have books studies, and yep. then you have the scoop in the May. Are you playing that one? Which one? Scoop. Are you playing a lot of events in scoops? Yeah, I will pick up the scoop as well. Nice. I'm going to play it. There are, I'm, I'm coming home from Spain to the 15th and the 18th I'm going to work. So I'm coming home 1st of May, right to the scoop, I think. <laughs> right in time for scoop, yeah. Yeah, yeah I always think at this time of year is when, when the tournament schedule starts to get fairly packed. Because we have the Irish Open, and then not too long afterwards we have Scoop, and then straight into the World Series. Yeah. I'm not going to the World Series for me, so it's no. not a problem. In Scoop, do you play, like, a lot of the other games? Uh, I play some of them. Eighth game, Horse, uh, Deuce to Seven, and Fixed Yeah. Limit. So, uh, and some Pilo. But I'm not sure how I'm going to focus this year, because... When I play eight game, I need to focus on eight games, and then then I can't have a lot of holding tables. Yeah. Because, like, or if I'm playing deuce to seven, I, I need to see, I need to see the cards. Yeah. So. Yeah, a lot of a lot of that in those games are just about remembering what cards are out. Yeah. And... So I yeah. I can't multi table with mixed. Yeah. I can't so, so it depends yeah. if I'm not gonna play too many mixed games and the thing is like for two years ago yeah. i qualified a lot into the medium mix games tournaments mm. in daytime like 10 it started 10 o'clock in the morning for you it's gonna be nine o'clock in the morning yeah. they start yeah. with satellite one one ticket for the mixed right. games and there was so many russian guys and you couldn't the game at all yeah. So like I'm printing yeah. tickets to the, yeah. the evenings uh, in the mix games, uh, and and now stars are they are starting like two o'clock, three o'clock. They have stopped right. having the mornings, and for me, I'm I'm going to get my kids three o'clock, so I can't play it. <laughs> yeah. So I can't satellite into them, so I have to buy in, and uh, and then it's better for me to buy into uh. 109 hold them and then 109 eight game because I'm better in all them and <laughs> and in eight yeah. game so and in in the eight game there are a lot of pros who, who are specialized on that mix game so yeah that's why Saint yeah. has 13 titles or something <laughs> Sick. Sick. Is that scoop and VCP? I think I think I have to go yeah. see in this uh, weather. It must be an amazing time for those guys who specialize because they get to play against players who barely know how to play the games. Yeah. He has nine times scoop winner. Wow. Yeah, nine times, yeah. V cup, v cup, yeah. So that's pretty sick. Uh, question in the chat do you run all the sims on your own computer or do you have to rent a server i don't personally rent a server uh, behind me here i have my solver machine i just use that for solvers for, uh, for running the solves um i don't use my machine i play on um that's wise because when you run a solver it can take a lot a lot of times yeah takes a lot of time so i can i can leave a script running for weeks on the on thing and then i don't have to use that computer for anything else this is the computer I use for playing and coaching. Yeah. As we see it here. How many screens do you have? Three. Three, yeah. The same as me. I have one big one and two small ones. Uh, I defend a 10 three here. We're right on the... Yeah, I defend a 10 3 series here. We're right on the bubble, so maybe I shouldn't have defended that. I don't know. That guy covers me, so. You're one from the bubble, yeah. 
And which tournament is this? This is the Fafti. Fafti. Yeah. Our favorite tournament, the Fafti. You're gonna you're gonna win that one. You 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 max late ray it because there was an overlay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I have seen it before with the old schedule. Me and you jumping into the fifty rebuy with ten yeah. days right before the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seeing the overlay is like, okay, we jumping in. <laughs> and there was the guy who sit there for ages, so now your ace is here. Mm. On the bubble. The bubble. Ah, this guy in the biggest actually less. Well, we might be bubbling this. <laughs> Ooh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a terrible flop. Ooh. That's an okay turn. Yeah. That's about... so... Ooh, that was so... I thought he had a straight there for a minute. Yeah. I was hoping for a very high card or a very low card, and that wasn't either. No. Oh, I did. Oh, I guess I covered him. I didn't. I didn't realize I covered him. So I wouldn't have been completely out, but I would have been very short. Yeah. A bossy move there when you get covered as well. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> but that, like, you have to take that one on the bubble there because you oh, yeah. can win the yeah. tournament there. So. Yeah, absolutely. With that stack. Yeah. I don't know how long is left for the five euro hair. Let's see how many. How many games have you left? I have one. Just the one, the it's, five euro. Yeah, it's three level more. So 30 minutes, something. Oh, it's the phase. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's so, the phase. Yeah. I'm still in that one. Uh, but you have the savior. I haven't. That's nine minutes left. I can jump into mm -hmm. that one. Uh, I think. Mm, 90 players. How much is that? 12 and 50. Or I can just see how you play every hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm starting to get some hands here though, so I might test the five euro. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is a is that tomorrow? It's a big tournament. 10k, deep stack, rebuy ante. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Rebuy and ante, actually. It's... And the slobber knockers tomorrow as well. Oh, okay. Rebuy, you have three rebuys, you have one ante. Is that most likely? This... Can you late rate that one and double rebuy and add an ante? Yeah. Maybe that's the best thing, actually. What do you think about that? Uh, the the, the add-on is bigger than the... Re yeah, the add-on is 60k. Yeah. and uh, So actually, the best thing to do, I think, is to match late reg and just rebuy. Don't don't rebuy, but add-on. Yeah. So so, so you get 90,000 chips for 100. Yeah, that's true. Whereas, so that's, whereas if you do the double rebuy... That's one hundred and twenty thousand chips. So, yeah. so you're you're only getting thirty three percent more chips for fifty percent more money. So I think the best thing to do is to just take the add on. Yeah, but is the add on one level after? Yeah, I think it's something like that. Yeah, so you kind of have to make sure you get to the add on as well without. Um... Yeah, but you can see. As long as you make the late wave, you still can re. That's true. Yeah. Rebuy yeah. And, and yeah. Yeah, I think we put. I think the, we put a section in one of the books, probably the end game one, which talked about the different. Uh, the fact that you're paying a different amount for for a different amount of chips. Like if you like, let's say somebody enters that and they bust, 
and they don't re-enter. Yeah. Um, so then they paid 30, they paid 50 euro for 30,000 chips. If somebody does what I'm suggesting doing, uh, they, they come in and they don't rebuy, but they do add on, they're getting 90,000 chips for 100 euro. Oh, so that's not much better. 50, yeah. They're getting three times more chips than for, for, for only twice as much money. If somebody plays from the start and has to do four buy-ins, let's say, to get to the add-on, yeah. So then they're paying two thousand five hundred euro for one hundred eighty or two hundred fifty euro for one hundred eighty chips. Yeah. Uh, or, uh, so, so so they're paying two and a half times as much as the person doing what I'm suggesting, um, and only getting double the chips. So, yeah, it's it's an interesting one. Like that's why I don't like add-ons where they do that because it gives too much of a disadvantage to people who come in from the start. Yeah. That's true. And you need people in from the start to get... You need people in from the start, absolutely, yeah. ...going, so... The problem yeah. is, for me, like, in the series, I'm almost never ready to play before 8 o'clock, or... Yeah. ...that's 7 that's for you, so it's one hour yeah. later. And when they are... When they're starting with the knockouts, yeah. I'm one hour late in... Yeah. That's not good as well. You don't no. you don't want to be coming in late to a knockout. No, I, um, I'm trying like maximize that to thirty minutes, but sometimes yeah. it's like yeah. Okay, I'm all in here. Noise. Fuck case. <laughs> uh, double up on nine big blind stack with sevens against a six. Ace on the river. Now we're down to 30 bigs, 27 bigs, 16 out of 29. Can you explain the pace tournament? How many pace is there? Yeah, it's only two. You play every day is go one phase one low, five euro with 5k guaranteed. And the goes are 25 euro with 25 euro thousand euro guaranteed i think and it goes every night uh, and day two gonna be on sunday 12th 12th i think yeah they're basically like live tournaments where there's more than one day one and uh, there's lots of day ones and then everybody comes together for day two yeah and the most like phase tournament i have been playing it's like when you are reaching day two you are not long long from the money sometimes you start in the money if it's the tournaments has overlaid yeah uh, you start in the money but if not um uh, you are very close to the money yeah so Uh, he said on Twitter he just dropped in. Nice for you to join us on stream. Hmm, I haven't seen here. Uh, Rock Romain says, Hi Paul, good to see you here. Uh, just noticed, Monica, you're using display and BBs, but Dara, you're sticking to chips. Any reason, Dara? I try the BB display method. Um, it should obviously make situations clearly quicker, but I just can't train my brain to get used to it. Just so used to absolute numbers. Yeah, to be honest, my the only the only reason I haven't done it is is just laziness. I haven't bothered to change the um the the display. Um, but but at the same time, I do think there's a certain advantage to um having at least some sites where you're using the chips because when you go and play live you have to do all those calculations anyway yourself yeah that's um, true. and if you if you have no practice to doing that it can be difficult i know some of the guys that i coach that are mostly online players they really struggle when they go out and play live um because of that yeah i use a longer time now i i definitely do thinking yeah the odds and everything i, I mean use a longer time but but I actually thought it will affect me more than it actually had. 
Yeah. So yeah. that's a good thing. But you know, if you turn it on, you can actually click on your chips and you can switch. You don't need to have it all the time. Okay. So if if you go to the hamburger up in the uh, left corner, uh, there you go. Yeah, click there. Settings, the first one, and then uh, the uh, the highest one, value in Big Bang tournaments. Click there that one, and then you can yeah. switch it like you can do on oh, body you, poker yeah. and everything. So now you can. <laughs> Go yeah. back and forth. Okay, I'm opening Ace Jack. This guy is jamming 20 bigs. He has a six. To the last yeah. time, if I'm losing this one, I'm down to seven bigs. But I want to have a bigger stack in this one as well. So, uh, probably, probably a fold actually. It's, yeah, Joachim Marini has pointed out. What did you say? Joachim Marini has pointed out in the chat that you're you're basically printing money, max late regging rebuy add-ons where the where there's a big add-on. Um, that's definitely true. It did jam King Nine offsuit, and I hold my Ace Jack offsuit. Whew. that was good. Up to forty-eight bigs. Uh, you were saying that uh, Joachim. Yeah, you're basically printing money when you um, late register those rebuy add-ons. Yeah, I actually, um, I think some people actually, what's it, what's his calling? Uh, he did uh, he did very good one year in the VCP. Mm. Uh, no, what's his calling? Uh, he was like running late raging like speculations about jumping in late to get mostly point because he was leading the leaderboard or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't remember his name anymore. I don't think he's maybe I at my my age, maybe younger, like thirty or something, with a lot of beer now. I think he he proposed to his wife on the visa P or something. She was playing as well. Yeah. Uh, but my the name is the name. Kenny Hallert's a big fan of Lay Rudging as well. Yeah. He was the tournament director for Unibet Open since the start. Yeah. And I, yeah. I get same. The Unibet. I didn't know he was playing the the first time I met him. Really? No, I didn't. Yeah. Okay, because I knew Kenny as a player for years before. Yeah. I didn't know he was a tournament director. I was really surprised. See, um, as that? Yeah, for yeah. me, it was like a tournament director. And I'm like, what? He's playing the 10K <laughs> at Bahamas? Yeah. Something. Yeah. Uh, because he was playing the 10, 10K or something with the... Um, was two other Norwegian guys on the I think it was the Bahamas. It was the party poker or something. Yeah. yeah. It was a final table. And I'm like, what? <laughs> He's there. <laughs> yeah, he found the WSP main event. I can't remember what year it was. Um Oh. Because I knew him I knew him online for years and years, Spacey F C B. He was one of the players I played the most against. Yeah. Uh, on stars and, and and other sites. He played a lot of uh, SNG. Uh, more MTTs, oh. but um, it was when I moved into MTTs. But uh, yeah, he um, pretty much all the time. I I I moved into MTTs probably about twelve years ago, maybe. Um, and he was already one of the best online MTT players. Oh, hmm. for that I didn't know. Yeah. Definitely no, but you are a lot of a good Irish poker player, though. Yeah, there's a good, there's a good few of us now. Yeah, when I started, there weren't there weren't so many. Um, no. Now there are some really good young online players. Um, yeah. Look at seven. This guy here is super loose. Um, I think with sevens, I can either check or bet, so I'm going to check. 
Let's try and get to showdown. Yeah, that's an even better card for you and him than King there. Yeah. If he bets now, I have an interesting decision because he's so loose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna have to go to court at the time. So, okay, hit the flush. He wasn't folding anyway on the turn. He had no, a flush yeah. draw, open ender. Yeah. I did see you check the flop very fast, but the turn he didn't. Do you see that? Interesting. He, he I actually didn't wait. He, he he actually waited like. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So he, he yeah, that means he he turned because he it was a good turn card for him. Yeah. He was trying to decide whether he should bet or not. Yeah. So you can find some tells. <laughs> you can find tells well. online. Yeah, <laughs> there's there's timing tells like that, but you you obviously picked up there, and I didn't. Um, um, sometimes you can pick up tells from people's names as well, which is uh, <laughs> kind of weird. But, uh, if it, if usually like usually if they have a name like like a really waka waka nine like, nine. <laughs> I'm the best, or I'm a pro, or something like that. It usually means they're a complete fish. Yeah. Um, people usually the best players have really boring <laughs> screen names. True. True. And there was there was another one as well, which is if people who have all caps, uh, all capital letters in their screen name. Yeah. Um, that's they're usually fish as well. <laughs> the first time I ever met Lappin online, he Lappin had a had an all caps name, so I thought he was just a fish. <laughs> Um, say it, say it, say it loudly. I, I will take a clip out, out of this and send him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His, uh, his screen name on on uh, on full tilt, if I remember correctly, was his name Lappin, all in capital letters, and his screen name on uh, on stars was Fishing Boy, all capital letters as well. Uh, I actually tried to switch my name on stars like multiple times but they are always confusing because when i uh opened star so account the, i was new to poker and poker i haven't played anything like just a few live events and then i like yeah. get they just I, I type in my name like monica monica yeah, yeah and then i just added some numbers so yeah. I heard about people had changed their name because it was similar to the, the, their own so they can people can recognize you because you're using your own name. Yeah. Uh, so I tried actually to change it to Waka Waka because I have that in every other client. <laughs> yeah. But they, they won't change it. So I'm stuck okay. with Waka, Monica. I'm stuck with Monica there. And the good thing when you are opening your account, when you are, you are, you are the fish. <laughs> yeah. Many people are marking you like a fish. And when you actually started to know the game and started to actually play better, I, I, I'm opening that account in 2009. So that was you uh, when I stopped playing. So I think my curve was like, <laughs> going right down. Oh, yeah. yeah, nice, nice. I got there, yeah. Straight there. I got shot. Straight there. Um, and then you, you might can, <laughs> if people spotted you as a fish. Before you can you can make it good later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. We're on the final bubble, final table bubble here. So Ooh, nice. Oh, I have to change my title there. Final table with Dara soon. <laughs> Hopefully, I can change it. You're gonna do like me now, winning the. Another tournament who's not SBC. <laughs> yeah. Which I only max lay reg because there was an overlay which um somebody pointed out pointed out in the chat. Yeah, very nice, very nice. 
Okay. I'm a rock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the eight seven doubles. I would have got him with my Jack Four. Look at that. <laughs> so, oh, sorry, guys. I have forgotten to pick a winner for the for the book. Uh, I can do it at uh, 12 o'clock, so you guys have 10 minutes more, and then yep. I stop the competition, so... Uh, if you want to win a book, type uh, Ostolf, <laughs> I don't know what it's called. <laughs> uh, like an E with a with an I, I went over, what's it called? letter i and you just went it over with a dot and a <laughs> no idea what you're talking about <laughs> i'm just trying to remember what's called i, I, mean, yeah. I have to google it because uh... <laughs> now get a new follower and trying to explain our english where i have but very thanks uh, leslie 1978 for coming in uh, let's see here. We are playing poker and SPC. We have Dara here. Me, Waka Waka, or Monica. You top time. X, 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 I can't pronounce it. X, exclamation point. Exclamation mark, yeah. Yeah, ex yeah, that's that's the word. So type in exclamation mark uh, with tickets behind, and then you could win the latest book of Dara and Barry. It's an online version, digital, you can download on your PC or computer, maybe. Is that the best thing? Like, can you download it on your phone so you can act like like reading it like a book on your phone? Um, I know there, there that yeah, there are ebook versions, so I presume some of them work on the phone. Um, yeah, I think so, and obviously there's a Kindle as well, yeah. a Kindle version. Uh, the satellite, the first book, is also in uh, audio on uh, audio book. Audio, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's very nice because if you don't want to read yourself, you can actually hear it and you can look at yeah. the book. I prefer having the book because of, you know, you're showing some examples of the yeah. tables and everything. So it's good to have the book in front of you and actually hear it. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. We were very reluctant to do the audio book because there's so many charts in the in the book and it's you know I, I couldn't just read the charts we actually had to rewrite the book slightly oh. to um, to try and explain stuff um the, rather than me just reading charts yeah, um, yeah. Uh, and we didn't do audiobook versions of of uh pko for the same reason and um in game yeah but we might we might do one for the gto one because that's there's less charts and stuff in that yeah People like audio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some people yeah. do like audio, and obviously because I do a podcast, people are kind of used to my voice anyway. So yeah, that's true. Uh, let's talk about that because you haven't mentioned the podcast. Uh, you have said in the in the intro you was doing a, a podcast with David Lappin, but how many years do you have the podcast now? Um, we started it in twenty fifteen, uh, but the first year we were just an Irish only podcast. Um, and we didn't uh we didn't really have well we had some listeners outside of ireland but not many we re we really focused on ireland and the people who made the podcast um they were a company that made podcasts on lots of things like cricket and rugby and uh, other things as well um but then they went out of business they went bankrupt um, and then a couple of years later, Unibet signed us and we were trying to think of, of stuff we could do for them. So we said, oh, we used to do this podcast. We could bring that back if you want. Um, 
And they said, yeah, sure. So they, um, we had to go and buy the, buy the name, buy the rights to the podcast to bring it back. Yeah. Um, but myself and David did that. So we started up again in 2017. Uh, um, and we, but but it wasn't just Irish only anymore. Obviously, it was uh, aimed at, at more generally than that. Yeah. We've been doing it constantly since twenty seventeen. Um, the f- the second season back, we were struggling to get guests. I mean, we really had to scrape the barrel. Like Ian Simpson was our first uh, guest. So, yeah. but we no, I, I'm joking. Obviously, we were very happy to interview Ian, and yeah. uh, <laughs> we. Uh, but we, but the second season, it was mostly just our English friends. Um, that would that would come on the podcast, but then we started to get more and more Americans and people from other countries as well. Yeah, I've um, been there. I've been there. <laughs> you've been there, yeah. We've had we've had, we've had at least we've had a couple of Norwegians. Um, Anton Vig is Norwegian or Swedish? I, I I'm just confused about that. You have the you have um, the Swedish guy. I think he's. Uh... Uh, either no, what's it called? Uh, he was. He was uh, is Sigurdsson, nice, nice. Is, yeah. What's he called? Uh, I can't names. Me and names is so bad. But the Swedish guy who was in Dublin, uh, is known in the oh, uh, yeah. He has been on it. Yeah. I think. Uh, I think. Yeah, I think we've had a few of them and. Yeah, so but, but we we basically got just got lucky as the, as it went on. We got more and more big guests, and uh, oh, this is interesting. We've got a flush of the ace. Mm. That's my hope here as well. I have you. I have Magnus. Hopefully, you both come back to the stream. Mm-hmm. And then I can probably hopefully get some other good good names. So yeah, it's, it's easier to get people when you've already had people. Yeah. Uh, that, that that they recognize because if you what, what we found at the start uh, the second season when we came back uh, we were struggling because you know we'd ask somebody and they'd look at the people who'd already been on and it was just Irish people that they'd never heard of yeah. so they, 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 they wouldn't say yes um, so we really had to rely on friends of ours who were English but then as we got more bigger English names like we had Jake Cody for example um, then it became easier to get other English people, but it was still difficult to get Americans because they would just look at the list and they they'd see a bunch of English and Irish people and they wouldn't see anybody. So actually, our our, our biggest lucky break was when Jennifer Tilly agreed to come on the show. Oh, um, nice! Because I had been friends with Jennifer for a few years, and I just chanced my arm and asked her if she if she'd come on, and she said yeah. And then once we'd had her, it seemed to be a lot easier to get other Americans because they go, oh, well, if Jennifer Tilly's been on the on the podcast, it must be a it must be a a, a, a big deal yeah um and she helped us to get other people as well she we got phil lack we got uh, she asked Ant- antonio Svendiari for us oh um, yeah. and we got helmet as well so it, it became a lot easier after we'd had jennifer yeah nice nice i think like uh not only for myself but it's like if people ask me something i almost every time say yes because i think yeah. it's not only about uh build up the community yeah. uh, around it it's also my own you know uh, waka waka and i'm building up myself a name as well yeah so, yeah absolutely. yeah like i like i never say no i mean i've been on podcasts where you know they're literally just starting up it's the first episode but i think if somebody is going to the trouble of making something like that um you want to you want to help them out anyway yeah I, I, you you are one of the yeah. nicest guys I know. Uh, like you always say yes, and you are always positive and trying to help. And yeah, uh, I will say, very very nice, Nora. You deserve everything good. I I I think so. I have Come to on. say that to you. So after uh, knowing you a lot of years, you I, I, I don't think I heard you say. One bad words about anyone, so <laughs> it's it says a lot how how big of a person you are, though. So yeah, I'm lucky to be a friend with you. I, I will say. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm I'm very happy to be friends with you as well. You uh, you're similar. You were like you just really positive, and um, you don't say bad things about anybody. 
Oh, we've got a gut shot here. This is our board. But we've only got 10 high. And we don't have a club. I'm just going to fold, I guess. I would like a small call there with a club. But... Yeah, with a club, we have more good turn cards. But... Yeah. But I have to update the title here now because you are actually on the final table. Mm -hmm. Dora Kearney playing final table. Okay, I'm just going to run to the bathroom very quickly. Yeah. That was the fifteen. See here, I saw some writing in the chat here, so let me see here. Uh, you know you're great when Dara's willing to go in with your chat with you, yeah. Okay, I'm um, going to be a bit unless Dara has signed up a book. There is no point. <laughs> they do you should play. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see here. I'm yeah. gonna pick a um, winner here. Yeah. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Season 71 has won. But I don't know what's happening there. How do you get 10 tickets? Mm, I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, anyways, please write to me uh, on uh, Twitch. Let me see if you're in here. I can try to find you. Tara, answer all poker question, even to low stakes player like myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't on, only play low stake in in uh, in uh, Malta, though, did you? <laughs> I did see you in some bigger tournaments. Yeah. Um. But uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Hmm. Any chance getting there on a full online session streaming for us? Star assume poker is like being unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I generally don't. Um, I do some live play sessions for uh, the training site that I do stuff for, for Jacket or jackettraining.com, um, but I've never actually done twitching. Um, this is a rare uh, appearance. And actually, I'm on a final table, which is even worse now. People are going to see how, how I play final tables, but... <laughs> um, 
This is gonna be great. I actually have to snap that one. Let's, 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 uh, oi. Actually, I forgot to send that one. Uh, let's see here. Uh, send a new one. And then put on my own. Um, so Doak is final table the Puff do you? <laughs> I don't know what's called. <laughs> can, can you pronounce it? Yeah, the Fafti. Fafti? Okay, we have to take a new one. Okay, because they can't hear you, your voice. Yeah, okay, Fafti. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Right, I'm gonna try it. <laughs> okay, Doak is finding table, the Fafti. It's 1274 on top. Eight left. Let's go. Maybe we're gonna, Maybe we're gonna, gonna see a big win here on the stream again, right? Oh, I forgot to mention all the ICM pressure on him. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. Yeah, I was just looking around the stacks. Like, I'm chip leader, but this guy has almost as much chips as me and this player here as well. So, yeah, there's going to be a lot of ICM spots for sure. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. Okay. I'm just going to open this. <laughs> Okay, these trips boards are really interesting. They're not normally just you bet small with the, your entire range, and I think that's even more the case with ICM. Yeah. Mm. Okay, if I bet again, I don't think he's going to fold a pair. Oh, I think I just check. I think he has a pair a lot here because he's called from the small blind. Yeah. Might be ambitious to try and get him to fold. People don't fold houses usually, so. I think I'm just going to give up and hope he's a worse lace. Yeah, okay. Find me chop. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, well, most of his range are pairs and ace high, yeah. Yeah. Some ace highs, there are some small pairs, and some people yeah. are like, also flatting suited connectors there so it's like okay three queens is <laughs> yeah I, I experienced that like i guess three queens they can hit on turn or or on the yeah. river if they hit a seven or eight or you often see like people are calling the first like on the flop there though yeah especially when it's that small like they shouldn't really be falling very much anyway no, um it's yeah. very unlikely you have the queen so yeah okay i'm going through to day two here. Um, Three. How many big squeaks do I have? Let's see here. I have 200k. Was it like 30 bigs or something? I'm gonna go down to the turn. Let's see. Some people are still playing. I see. <laughs> <laughs> the um, table's hanging left. Like three people are not going with us. But the good thing, though, I don't have to focus on this face anymore. I don't know. Is it like your biggest deck going through, or I don't know. It's oh yeah, I'm not sure actually what the rules are. No, I don't know if you going into it again. No, I haven't read anything about it actually. Well, seeing the face low. Let's see here, face two. So I'm number 45 out of 89, so I'm 
in between, in the middle. This is obviously a very loose open, but because we're a chip leader, uh, I think we can open nearly any ace. And this guy's short, so he'll actually stick it in a lot of worse hands. We can call him off if he shoves. Yeah, I agree with you there. You open, you can fall for a shove from the 20, 20, yeah. 20 big blind stacks yeah. there. And you also have the, like the six big blinds and three big blinds you call yeah. off. So. Jack 10, on the other hand, uh, even though it's a prettier hand, you're not going to be ahead when these guys show very often and you don't have a blocker, so. Yeah. Have you ever won the 50? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think I have either. I was wondering how, lot, how late it goes. I don't think my wife is going to be very happy. <laughs> Thanks for a ride, uh, Vede Poker. Vede Poker is also streaming on English, it's streaming mostly on Killbet. Um, and they have their own tournament, so if you're not following them, please go in and do so. Very nice guys. Two brothers streaming. So, oh, nice. Brothers? Yeah. Um, so the one is the big brother and and, uh, and the junior, <laughs> if you call him junior. The so, younger brother. Yeah, the younger brother. Okay, so yeah, I'm I'm finished playing. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Register anything else? No, and just want to watch your final table and see. Thank you, thank you. Uh, if you need to go to bed, by the way, you just go ahead. No, no, you don't no, have no. to stay in. Okay, this guy's very <laughs> you don't go. You don't gonna. Yeah, we're getting two to one here, so we can call here. <laughs> oh, the other guy called as well. That's not ideal, but no flying here. Mm, that's oh. a good river. That's a very good river. Okay, I think the good thing is here, yeah, you Dara, if you're running hot on this final table, you definitely will come on on a stream again. So <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Got that small make it look like a blocker. He can call with a pair now, I think. Just think I'm blocker betting and maybe once in a while he gets creative and tries to bluff me. No, Love River though thinks he's losing and the other guy is waving at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Maybe he has the queen as well, but uh, he might just be bluffing. I think he probably has the queen, though. Yeah. Yeah, he has the queen. We yeah. have the same hand. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for a turn for the other guy. <laughs> Verse tripper. <laughs> Pink top here and flesh draw on the turn. Yeah, he was unlucky there. He had the best hand and he was up against two people with the same hand and he still managed to lose. Yeah. Very unlucky. Yeah, okay, well, you have a script ad play. And writing here, you can multiply times your biggest stack okay. goes to the face, too. Okay. But I think, like, I have a good stack in the 25. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, lobby. Uh, and number 15 there with 294. And there oh, are nice. 56 going through. Nice. So I have a good stack there, and in the low ones, I'm in the middle. So I'm, I'm not going to play anymore, I think. Yeah, no. I don't need to be any point. No. There are some tournaments as well, uh, accumulator tournaments, where you're, you you can add all your stacks together. Yeah. Um, I've seen those, that, those at the Aussie Millions. 
They have someone on GG. Okay. Um, what's it called? It's a PLO knockout tournament something. It's, Gosh. it's 52 dollars. Well, 52.5 dollars tournament. And then you can make up every every everyone you played. And uh, your whole stack goes to day two. Or every stack you go through with goes to day two. It's yeah. a 250,000 euro tournament or something. I think so. It goes every Sunday. And I start pretty late, like on 10.30 Norwegian time. So it's a late day two. Yeah. So I don't think it's finished before the morning, Monday morning or something. The good thing is like on, on I'm not the ambassador for Unibet anymore, but the good thing about this site I will say it's the tournament normally is finished like twelve, eight o'clock. No uh, twelve one o'clock. Yeah. For you yeah, it's it is like good. around eleven, twelve twelve o'clock, so yeah. Yeah, Unibet put a lot of thought into like people who have to work, um, yeah. not want yeah. wanted to be playing at five o'clock in the morning. So, uh, that's that's definitely a good thing about these tournaments. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, and not only for Unibet, only for people who are not gonna work in the morning but have to get up with kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's a good thing, I think. Yeah. Okay, so we can open the King 8 here. We're not calling anybody if they shove, but this will work a lot. Yeah. Open the King Queen as well. Um, GBS uh, setting it. Ne nearly sure Ian won that when he was a Unibet pro. Yeah, I think he probably did. Ian used to play all the majors. Don't go to bed next time there are sim poker. It might be in 2025. <laughs> you leave me. No, it's not the next time. It's gonna come and join us more. Definitely. I have promised to come back, yeah. Okay. Can I get him to fold a pair? I'm actually, oh yeah, I've got showdown here. I think I'll just take my showdown. Yeah. He's not folding an ace, so. No. I do like the check yeah. there because uh, if you have a flush draw, you might just gonna yeah. uh, beat him with King High anyway. So, yeah, exactly. Thanks for following, Max. Um, uh, I'm not playing the Irish Open, I don't think so because it's the Easter. I'm coming back from Bratislava, and yeah, if I'm going back early from Bratislava, the Norwegian Championship gonna be there. Uh, that's the week before Irish Open. Then I might take a plane just to say hi to Dara. <laughs> yeah, I miss you at the Irish Open. I always think that's the time of year when you come over here. I see you at the Norwegians and then the Irish Open. So. Yeah. That's the usually time I'm, I'm meeting you besides Unibet you know, Opens have been the last couple of years, though. Yeah. So that's true. You're still going to come to Univet Opens, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's my plan, at least, as long as I'm not working. Yeah. Uh, because, like I said to you, now I'm not the ambassador anymore, I'm definitely going to win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I remember Jerakim uh, Ilva, you know Ilva. Yeah, uh, I remember Ilva, well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she uh, told me she was ambassador for Unibet back in when it was Unibet Open Sweden or something. A long okay. time ago. Yeah. 
and he, she was on four events or something and she didn't cash a single one and then she was on the trip with me to dublin and she cast she cashed everything <laughs> she's like it's a curse being an ambassador now <laughs> now you know <laughs> so now i'm like okay i'm i definitely need to go to the unibet open now because now i'm not the ambassador and before i was the ambassador i did cash <laughs> yeah you're going to start running really well again yeah 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 Mm. Yeah, and the reason you had to stop being a uh, unit ambassador was because of the law changing in Norway, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, so not, now yeah. it's not allowed to um, advertise for, yeah. for that. So when I can't do it in social media, it's like, yeah, uh, yeah. It's for, it's unfortunate. Yeah, I I, I was talking to um, Delia De Jong and Matty Mulhusen in in. Um, in Vegas, and they she had the same problem. She she was with GG, but then the law changed in Holland, and they weren't allowed to be what they called role models for gambling companies. So yeah, she told me about that in Malta because she had a five year deal with GG about five years. Oh my yeah. god! I don't know what's that uh, long. She she quit her job. I t I thought it was oh. five years or was I, I, maybe it was yeah, two I, years. It could be. I knew she quit her job. Yeah. And she yeah. quit her job because of the good deal, and then <laughs> I think she said like six months after the laws yeah. changed. So that was pretty bad. So yeah. fifth, uh, good evening. Nice to see you in here. We see now Dora playing the fifth. I can say it. Fifty. <laughs> Fafti, 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 five k guaranteed. Uh, if your tournaments twelve hundred on top, he's guaranteed hundred ninety one now. So he's cheap leading with ten bigs for second on tear now. So here we get live ICM thinking. Mm. <laughs> so this is good. Yeah. This is very good. Yeah, I pulled away a bit now. That's the second biggest stack there. And this guy is third. But then there's a lot of, nobody's really short. Everybody, all the other guys have like 12 to 15. So they're just kind of looking for good shove spots. Yeah. Okay. This is about what we can call. We can put a lot of pressure on this guy after the flop because of the ICM. Yeah. But if somebody shows if somebody shows Rob is gonna fold. Mm. Like connection problem for this player. Uh, Spokey, good evening. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm not playing anymore. I uh, was playing a face tournament. Who was the last tournament they had? And are through to day two. Um, and now we are watching Dara on his final table. The major. 1200 on top there. Poker roll, what's your thought on recent history from signing or starting the tournament with turn money out of the Unibet uh, account was blocked? Um, what's your thought about the recent history from Stavang in Norway stating that the woman didn't get her money from Unibet and account was blocked? When Rose says it was 1.8 million knock. That's true. I, I read the first story I read uh, uh, about this yesterday. There was then she was not out with her name. Uh, it's like only staying. Uh, Univet uh, blocked her account and she don't give her the money for one point eight million Norwegian crowns. Though. Uh, my first thought was like it's because of this article. Univet get a lot of negative. Uh, advertising so it's not good for them and 1.8 million is very very little for us that big of a company with so many uh 
yeah, what's called uh, Akshok in Norwegian. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, so so it's so little money for them, and this thing is hurting them more, but they can pronounce um, one person and go out and say what they think is shady her. And for me, it's something shady because uh, for first of all, uh, if you have a gambling problem, you will have a Unibet account long, long time ago. And if you don't have a gambling problem, um, you don't put on a 9k on an account, 9k, uh, it's going to be 900 euros. You don't put on 900 euros in your account and place everything on one bet and then you win and then place everything on another bet and then win, place everything on another bet. You don't do it because <laughs> yeah, it's not normal. I don't think it's normal to do that. If you nobody tells you to do it, so if you never have, if you are having a play problem, uh, and and you never have a Unibet account before, I think it's very rare that you don't, because Unibet have been in Norway so many years, and uh, I think it's very rare that a player who never had it. So, uh, and the other thing is like, if you don't have a Play, uh, yeah, like I said, if you don't have a gambling problem, uh, you don't take every winnings and put it on another bet. You will always save some money. You will, because if you place everything on one bet, okay, if you lose, you have nothing. So... That's my... Uh, thinking it's something shady and when you trying to get out the money you always have to that's with every site i've been on it's like okay you have to get clearer picture here you need the, that one address blah 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 that's always yeah. a thing and they always normally ask for another one thing is if you uh, get a new account always do that first i think it's the law now you have to do it first like putting on your passport and everything in id yeah. i think you have to do it now because of the white washing money laundering yeah well, money laundering <laughs> white washing and uh, that's a new reason getting out yeah uh... Yeah, uh, and uh, and the other thing is like, uh, uh, what I uh, I forgot what I'm gonna say, but yeah, that's that's good for you. Yeah, I'm glad it's I'm I'm glad you knew so much about the story because I. That's, this is really the first I've heard about that story, so... Yeah, yeah, it's been on the Norwegian site, but it's like, I'm saying, like, somebody... Yeah, I, I never go in there again because of this story, but they actually have to look bigger because... Yeah. A big company like Unibet will never stop a payout if there isn't something wrong. Yeah. Sure. Even if the payers are in millions, they will st yeah. will not stop it because having this, when the papers now is writing about she don't get her money, that's a yeah, piece it's of terrible cake, yeah. and it's worse for them this reputation, and yeah. and you know the the laws in Norway who um, it's called lottery till it. It's like a uh, who has like uh, the overlook from yeah. all the gamblings? Like we have like the monopoly in Norway, right? So yeah. it's only that one you can play on, and they have like they don't offer poker. They only have casino games, odds, um, and you have like lotto and that kind of stuff, bingo. So. Uh, they love these stories because they don't want to get other playing company into the market yeah, at all. I want to come. So, 
So, but if people go into every play company and actually read the rules, every company can hold the money. I saw on Twitter there was a guy who actually get cancelled all his his winning on uh, the Norwegian company as well. So it's happening. So if it's something going on, people are actually. Uh, I think people have to think a little bit longer than like, okay, how normal is it to put down 900 euros in your account and gamble everything, gamble everything and spin 900 euros up to uh, how much gonna that, uh, that gonna be in euros, it's gonna be a lot. Um... Mm. Okay, it's going to be one hundred and sixty two thousand one hundred and eighty eight euros. Wow, that's quite a spin up, yeah. Yeah. And you, you're going to do that in a couple of days or a night or whatever it was. Or she started playing. Uh, she started playing on tennis games, and then she went up to a lot, and she took all uh, two. Yeah, it's gonna be two hundred Norwegians, two hundred k. Uh, and then she st started when she get li li limited because she bet so big. She go into the casino and bet everything on red or black. Mm -hmm. So she she put on she put on two hundred Norwegians. Um, she put on eighteen thousand euro to red or black. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Yeah. I mean, there's something not correctly here, and then she she tried to take out the money, mm. and then she want to stop some of the money because she want to play more. Okay, then you have maybe a play problem. That's I can I can read, but when you going into the chat many times a day and try to get out your money because you are doing something this weekend, they will definitely look into every betting you have done and every card you have used to put in the money and where IP address you have played on. They will look at everything. And yeah. it's very weird for a woman. I, I can't explain it, but I think it's very well because most people who are working has a sense of like money is money. Yeah. Uh, so they don't, if you win, you don't want to put everything on the next. If, if I'm win, winning big in poker, I don't use the whole bankroll to the playing a, uh, big tournament using whole my bankroll and don't go up to high stake just winning a big one yeah because then i can play three tournaments and i lose everything <laughs> so so i think like it's something sketchier i don't know and the thing is like if she has a playing problem i think it's very well, that she didn't have a Unibet account before. Yeah. For recently. Like, that's because Unibet have been in Norway so many years. So, I, I think like people go into Unibet before they go into the other one, many of the other ones. Like, I can't all the names like Marathon and yeah. Wow. Um. God, what a spot. I was actually going to shove over a race, but I don't know if I can call now. God. Wow. Oh, this is insane. I think I have to fold now. That's terrible. It's really sad. Yeah. I'm second, and I'm well clear of the other, most of the others, so... Yeah. That's insane. That's insane. Yeah, yeah, you will make a great guest on Chip Race. I meet her in Tallinn. Yeah, she definitely will. 
she definitely will. She had to go over to play more mixed games herself now. Oh, she playing more mixed games, is she? Yeah, she she started playing more mixed games. So right. it's gonna be a mixed game festival in Bratislava the week before uh, the Norwegian show. She's going there. How tame she could cheat. Hmm. I'm not sure what you mean there. Or how could you she cheat? Uh you can cheat by uh Yeah, it's not a poker, or she's not a poker player though, but um, this is just a situ situation about gambling though. For Norway, it's not good like these stories coming out because then it's like, okay, we, can, we can't open up for this because they are so, they, they are not serious and they just take money from others and yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's obviously terrible publicity, but like the the legal sites like Unibet, they they're subject to lots of regulations that people don't know about. Not just to do with the, the running of the site, but things like problem gambling, um, even money laundering as well. Yeah. Um, and and they can actually lose their license if they're if they, if they mess up in any of those areas. So they have to be super careful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that that's that's why I think like uh, this situation is, is, is very special, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but I I don't think it's like I don't think it's like normal to do this. Is but it may be for people with big problems. It may be like putting in nine hundred and try to spin it up. But when you have like yeah some uh, say you have eighty thousand euros you don't yeah. put everything on black or white so it's not normal <laughs> i don't think so yeah i don't think so for even people with playing problems you will sure. definitely go for one port at least <laughs> mm -hmm. so Uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's obviously a very big story over there. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a weird one. Uh, hello, let's go for fifty FP. Yay! No, I'm the betting world. I got two thousand nine hundred seven. No, I, I, I don't think so either. Yeah, something is very fishy. That's Swimmel is actually explaining it very good here because that that was I was trying to tell. Like, yeah, she, she for for a, a normal person is like okay, put in nine hundred and only put it on tennis games. You yeah. either get tips from someone professional or game fixers. Yeah. Because you're winning every game, like you win up to, I I don't know, there was a lot of money she went on tennis before she gets mm -hmm. limited yeah. and then started betting on red and black. Yeah, I have some friends in sports betting too, and they tell me that tennis is, is probably the most fixed sport of all, because you can get a tennis player who doesn't make a lot of money, uh, and you bribe them to lose, for example, a set six love, um, and that's something they can easily control. Um, and uh, and obviously they have a big incentive to do it. If it's a match they're going to lose anyway, they might as well make extra money by agreeing to lose that. There was the, 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 there was a guy who worked for, I think it was Betfair, and he told me that there was one Austrian tennis player, they, they were absolutely certain he was doing that, um, to the point that when well, there was one match where there was a lot of money coming on, I'm say to lose the second set, six love, and 
they reduced the price to something ridiculous, like 10 to 1 on, that he would lose at 6 love, and still people were betting because yeah. um, they obviously knew that that was going to be the result. Thanks for following, Fradan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, I think, like, down in divisions, you have, like, more uh, game fixing and people yeah. actually think because they yeah. get paid to lose or paid to win or, yeah, they make a deal. Yeah. Wow. Any sport where there's a lot of money gambled on it and the players are not actually making that much money themselves, uh, they, they have an incentive. We had, there were also match fixing in, in snooker back 10 years ago and snooker players didn't make very much money as well um, for the same reason. Uh, I agree with both Spokey and Swimble uh, that players are not well enough protected. Uh, and the problem is there is the players will be more protected if the Norwegian's law had been more open for it, I think. Like, but if you go on Twitter, you can actually see like, yeah, people is 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 blaming Nosk tipping at the Norwegian side for the same thing, holding back money, canceling bets who goes in. So. I'm not sure where you are good protected or you should be like anywhere you're playing you should be protected or your money should be at least so it's like I see like anywhere uh, like Tora has money on a site. He's trying to get it out. I don't know how many emails or new documentation it has to go through to get it out. It took a while, but to get yeah. it out. It's like you have to be a little bit patient and don't like this something here. This woman was in the chat multiple times trying to get out the money because she was going to do something this weekend. And that's very weird. <laughs> I, I think it l looks something fishy here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think people think when they hear about these stories that it's the site trying to hold on to the money, but like the site re really has no incentive to do that. If it, it's, it's just very bad publicity for them when it happens. Yeah. It's nearly always the case that there's, there's some regulation they're worried about that they would be breaking if they're not, if they, if they just release the money straight away. Yeah. Okay, we've been playing very tight here, but we're going to go with pocket nines, even if he shoves. Okay, good luck. Hold. That's a good start. Yes. Whoa, yeah. nice. He was big chip leader. To be fair, he, uh, he, he's just got unlucky a couple of times. He lost a flip. Yeah. And he's obviously supposed to shove here. This is an interesting spot here now. Yeah. It's blind on blind. Welcome in, Yoke. I think this is strong enough to raise calls, so I'm going to, even though we wouldn't love it if he shoves, but... I think if we if he shoves and we win, we we definitely win the tournament. So yeah, uh, yeah, I can raise this. I can't raise this. No, it's all in as well. Yeah, can't raise this. I'm still thinking about your ace king suitors. <laughs> yeah, I am too. <laughs> you am too, yeah. That, that, that wouldn't really hurt. Yeah. Uh... Uh, we can call here. That will okay. be interesting if you check it out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to, I'm definitely going to have to run that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're definitely going to send me the answers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe we can take it on stream. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. We can run that one on stream, yeah, for sure. 
because that one is pretty interesting because I think like especially a lot of amateur players will call there. Yeah. Uh, We're obviously I mean, well ahead of his range, but uh, because he does have a lot of worse aces, but I but think we like have we have so many forty sixty there. Yeah. But we have to be so far ahead because of the ICM. Yeah. Uh, and there was a, like a six big blind stack or something. Yeah, yeah, there was. Yeah, and we were we were we clear were about second it. out of six, so I think it's right full. Yeah, but I think it's close though. It, yeah, it felt very close, yeah. um, especially being suited. That would have been close to if he'd shoved, but I guess I was folding. It's a very special dynamic when you are on the final table. If you are like a middle stack, you just sit there. If yeah. you are the loser stack or the, the smaller stack, you have to try to get some chips. Yeah. Uh, and if you are the chip leader, you can hope so much looser than you normally will. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, if, okay. So my strategy here, blind on blind, is I'm going to raise very strong hands, like tens that I can call off. Mm. I'm going to raise absolute junk, like a two off, and I'm going to pretty much limp everything else. Yeah. Okay, well, we're getting more than two to one, so we can't fold yet. This is not a good flop for his range. Bella is eating popcorn. Will you run the AK fold in Acer in, in the clear? Is it a clear fold? Uh, it's not a clear fold. I'm no. definitely going to have to run it. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably confident it is a fold, but yeah, we'll, we're going to do that on, on stream. Uh, yeah. At some point, we can definitely we do a do study that. stream. Okay, I feel like they're overfolding now because of the. So I think I'm just going to use my king as a blocker. No. Put in my place. This one we're going to have to go with because they've seen us raise fold a lot. Yeah. I mean, I'm still ahead of his range and he should be folding a lot. So, yeah, we're going to go with this one. This is interesting. Hmm. I wonder what he's got that he's thinking about now. Ooh. Okay. Let's go. That's good. <laughs> stream good. Stream good. <laughs> That's right. how you win tournaments. You just play really badly but run really well. <laughs> Get it in oh, very much the worst hand. Double knockout. Double knockout. I was actually thinking like, okay, now he's thinking about eight, nines. Yeah. I didn't think he was so strong there. No. The jacks. Okay, the fourth with the nines of hit. Okay, so we're going to be heads up. Wow. Okay. Uh, I, okay. I forgot to okay. send every... every... We can... Dara Th is also on up. stream here. Is a cheat leader and is playing for 1274 euros. Come join us on Twitch to eat Spielhagen poker. So I have to just this time I'm gonna post it though. <laughs> because <laughs> now I didn't say 50. 50. Mm-hmm. 
So I'm gonna raise. stand this from the race for sure. So for everyone on the stream, we're definitely gonna get Dara in here again. This is run good. <laughs> <laughs> If Mr. Dogs okay. allow it, because he was taking an early night, now it's almost 12. <laughs> um, I limped here pre-flop because I need to limp some aces yeah. at the stack there. Um, now we've hit, the, we've hit the nine, so we're obviously going to bet. Um, trying to decide the size. What a dry board. Yeah, I think we're going to go two big blinds here. Monsterfish, welcome. Thanks for following. Yeah, I came. Nice to see you in here. Nice to see you. Mm, I guess we can bet again. We can still get called by a lot of worse hands, so... Yeah, I will definitely go again there, so. And you have some straight draws. Yeah. Uh, we can just shove this now. Tony Big's effective. Mm. We could do some limping here, but we can, I guess we can raise call this one. Hopefully he's getting tired, yeah. Yeah. He's always like, well, he has his legitimate hand, but okay, he's hit the seven. Fortunate. Now we have a game again. Okay, we're going to have a longer headshot match. Just a little bit. Well, it doesn't play very well post slot, but it's nearly always the best hand there, so I just shove it even for that many. Yeah. Uh, turn three is pretty bad, so I'm going to put it into the raise cup full range. You're back the the same tips uh, where you started. Yeah. The heads up. <laughs> we were for folding the AK a while ago. You're a uh, ace queen there. <laughs> <laughs> I think you mean Shelly. Shane, no, Shane Kelly, 11. Oh, Shane, yeah. Yeah. Sh Shane, Shane's oh, Shane. It's the Shane. Irish Shane. Or... This is Shane. Let me check. Oh, yeah, Shane. Yeah, that's one. He, Shane's one of my students. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Sold any books? Uh, we haven't sold any books yeah. on stream, but we have given away our books on stream. And yeah. uh, I was trying to send you a PM, but you haven't sent me a PM, so I have to send you one. Couldn't find stuff. I turned open into there, so we oh, rolled the barrel again. It. it didn't get the notice. Bluffs on that board will generally be hands that are wrapped around the seven. What did you say? On the queen, queen, seven board, I had eight, six. I, I check raises a bluff because the best bluffs are hands that can turn straight draws because they connect with the seven. Yeah. Um, Thank you. 
let's see here. And we've double backed our hand so we can use this one as a bluff. It doesn't help us in any way, so we're giving up. Yeah. Play very fast though. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I've been making a conscious effort to slow down uh, heads up recently because I probably do play a bit too fast. No, not in you. He, he's playing faster than you. <laughs> yeah, it, it the other actually, guy. yeah. Yeah. Okay, we have lots of backdoors here, so. No, we don't like that. So can you get, get your uh, Univet people to get bet sliders? <laughs> yeah, we keep asking them first, and uh, I, I don't know why it hasn't happened already. No, it shouldn't be too much trouble, right? You would think not. But yeah, it's you know you you know it's a separate company that does the software, so yeah. Check in the chat. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Back to level stacks. Meet seven suitors. Do some limping here, I guess. Yeah, I like you mixing it up. Yeah. Turn the flush draw king's better for us. Jack tree and a junkie, so we'll turn this into a raise fold. Uh, King six off. Could go either way with this, but we the call. Yeah, I like mixing it up a little bit. Yeah. One of the things about heads up, it's very tricky because you can't be too unbalanced doing the same thing with the. This does make no sense. Hmm. The only thing that makes sense is you hit the five. <laughs> I'm going to say the same thing, but I couldn't I because the flush, you are playing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the flux does not make sense. I, yeah. I, I had the knocker, knocker but. Yeah. Since you had the blocker there, it was like a five or nothing in my head. Yeah. I will call that yeah. too. So I can't I can't mm. talk in the hand, but you said what I was thinking. <laughs> so <it's> like... yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can pull King Nine, that's very strong, but Will we see Monica and the Irish Open yeah. when the Norwegians are moved to Bratislava? A monster fish uh I don't think I'm gonna come over. I'm gonna be in Spain and congratulations with your victory in Dublin here. Live victory for 6k, was it? I think this is Monster Fish. Is the. Yeah, I think so. Um, okay, so I've offered and call. And be blind. I was gonna write uh, to the guy who won the book, and I, I, I write a little bit on in Norwegian and, and a little bit book. I uh, write in English. <laughs> Switching it off here. Um, If he has a two, he wins the tournament because we're not folding. Yeah. 
Ooh, that's a bad river. Connects with Queen 10, Blackdoor Hearts. Uh, well, we can't fold at that size. He had to have the two. Okay. River, River actually saved us there because yeah. he was probably going to shove a blank. That's true. Okay, I'm going to run to the bathroom. Yeah. Shall be back. Be back in five. You're starting then. So. Let's see here. Oh, I'm starting to get tired. So, yeah, Vakim, are you feeling better today? Are you back on stream Friday? And good to see monster fish in the chat and yeah. Yeva Kim as well. Now you said it, sure. Lots of familiar Irish faces. Apart from Yeva Kim, obviously. Okay, so we're down to 15 big blinds, so we're going to have to get a bit lucky. Yeah. Now it's your turn. He had yeah. Eastern. I went on a run recently where I won eight heads up in a row, um, but I but it ended last night, and <laughs> it's going to be very annoying if I lose two in a row now. Yeah. So we were talking about this earlier. You just see these weird sequences where everything happens. That's true. That's true. I was like. Uh, two of my last okay now it's three but let's say not the one i won on monday but before there the, the two two uh, heads of matches i go into i was like well uh, four to one like fa favorite yeah and i lost both of them it happens a lot of the time the cards just decide heads up and and when the supernova, I was like a big chip leader, and then I lost some, I lost a flip, and then yeah, two flips, yeah. I think. I lost two flips. And then I was three ways, and then I was real equal stack. I did some mistakes. Well, I did one mistake, actually. Um, and then I get like a lot of limping from the shortest guy. I flopped two pair, he hit two pair, and yeah, it was like that. And then I was down to like 10 bigs. Jamming jack nine suited in small blind in the big, big stack. Or actually, yeah. the thing who didn't make me the big chip leader anymore was a 10 big blind stack jams all in. I call in small blind with ace queen suited and big blind who has 20 bigs jam over. It was four ways. I call and he has tens and tens hold both of us. Mm. Other has ace queen. Yeah. So that's why he was the new chip leader. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think maybe tens is a folder, but because the high price jump is. Yeah, it's him, yeah. But I, I haven't checked it up. But uh, either way, uh, I did a mistake there three ways afterwards. Yeah. And then I was the shortest stack and did hit some two pair flop, yeah. turn two pair, yeah. 
Um, was lucky when I had 10 bigs, double up, jack 9 against aces. But uh, he was a big favorite when we come heads up. I think I had like 20, 25 bigs and he has 60 or something. Or more. It was <laughs> pretty big. It was a big yeah. difference. Uh, but this time I said, okay, now I'm, I'm the underdog. This time I'm gonna win. <laughs> so it did happen. <laughs> because when you are like, very big chip lead, you feel very confident, but only one flip can turn it around. So yeah, completely. Yeah. Okay. So 15 big blinds, we're just going to shove this ace. Good luck. I agree with you. Monica, can you ask Dara, can he ask Inubet, is there any chance of getting Sai to allow to have preset betting amounts? Yeah, <laughs> I have asked him. Yeah, that's, that's been on the list forever, Jer. Yeah. It really has. Uh, yeah, it's it's something we all want as well. Um, okay, so Queen Jack suited here is a limp call, probably. That's a good flop. What is the thought process when you seems very confident that certain card is his or mine? I understand something in regular or flooring, but not so much heads up. I think it's, yeah, you're going to play this one. And... Yeah, I think we'd want to keep just calling, keep all his bluffs in. Obviously, that's a very good card for him, but we're not folding to a pair. Yeah, it don't look very strong when he does that. <laughs> it has the round four. <laughs> yeah, that's what we call okay. a bluff, really bluff. Uh, Poker roll is asking you, you. You said this is better card for him. His range, mine range. Asking you. Yeah. You seem very um, confident it's... when you talk like that. Yeah, it's generally like one player has the stronger hands preflop, um, and that means that the the high cards tend to be better for them. And um, so when a high card comes, uh, it's it's much better for their range. And um, yeah, that's how they. That's pretty much it. Yeah. But the range are very wide, so it's it's definitely more difficult than uh, than full ring for sure. Yeah, I will add to that. Like, if you raise the button and the big blank just call, you can eliminate some very strong hands from his range, especially if you deep heads up. Yeah. Uh, because then you want to get more chips into the pot, so you will have a three bet there. Yeah, um, exactly. So you can eliminate some, but you also have some, some setups you can do, of course. Uh, yeah. Um, I think I probably can bet here. Um, feels like he's, he's got a lot of ace highs here. That's really what we're targeting. Or a king high works yeah, too. Nice. Just woke up from a power nap, so yes, back on stream on Friday. Sounds good. Sounds good, Kim. I will be watching you on Friday. I actually meet Linus Loma in town today on the way to the pub. He said he got pretty lucky heads up with uh, with you, Dara. Spell some I had a question. <laughs> Fair enough. Very nice of him to say. Um, yeah, he did win a few flips and stuff, but uh, he played very well. Yeah, I mean, he plays, yeah, he's an extremely good player, obviously. Uh, yes, sir. 80, thanks for following. Okay, so what have we got here? Ten of spades, it's ten of diamonds. Oh, I think we just have to check now, I guess. Five of diamonds, interesting. Let me check, click our show then with the queen. Fair enough. Oh, the blind's gone up, so we're a little bit shallower now. 
So now you are equal again. Yeah. This one we can raise or call. I think I'm just going to raise call it. So, um, fun fact for for the stream with Magnus Carlson on Sunday, I, I bad beat uh, Dara <laughs> with a misclick. <laughs> All right, yeah, that was a hilarious hand. Uh, and yeah. Uh, the, yeah, the good thing the was this was in in the five euro the low yeah. low tournament. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was a good good old uh, what do you call it? We used to call that play the scan the um, uh, it's the the Scandi min race um, because I opened an early position and you uh, you just clicked it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because you thought I hadn't raised, obviously. Yeah. You yeah, yeah. You were first person in so um and i thought you, you i i thought you must have kings or queens at this point <laughs> and then the board came king high and uh or sorry jack high yeah and um, yeah I, i'm not only gonna call you made a tiny call. bet because i was trying to get kings or queens in yeah uh, or a tiny check raise actually yeah and that's what it was uh, yeah you have a i had a uh yeah I, I I was gonna call with King Jack yeah, suited there, and then yeah. I <laughs> click the three bigs, and pretty like I think it was in the middle position. You opened under again, I think, and I oh, was like, time, yeah. yeah, high That's jack, fine. low jack, high jack, high jack, I think. Yeah. Okay, so we turned two straights here. Um, I guess we just go ahead and bet small. Interesting river. Nice. Yeah, that's great. There is actually because you see him done a lot of like the eight four there. Yeah. Um. There's yeah, that changes. So, so, so not the best card for you, but say, say a blank card there is. Sometimes I I would like to check this because like a maniac who lost might, or might yeah, go for, yeah, will yeah. Go for a big bet and you call all these bluffs. Yeah. Um, it's a bad ace. I think we just put it in pre-flop. I think he's raising too much on the button. Um, seems to be just clicking raise a lot. Maybe he has a decision. Yeah. Especially on this type of stack size, it's like... Yeah. If you... Like three bet in there, it's like and not putting him all in. It's like is he jamming though? <laughs> yeah. Oh wow, he tanked with ten as well. Ooh. But we got lucky. Yeah, but we were very lucky. he was lucky <laughs> earlier. He did, yeah. He he just had the honor to play like. 20 minutes longer heads up with you. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Monica. Thank you for the rail. This we... is run good stream, right? Now you're definitely, definitely coming on again. Stream. Yeah, I run very well on the clown table. I got an ace queen in against ace king and Jackson one, and you just saw what happened. Yeah, but you you you, you don't gonna remember this one, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll block them from our mind and never talk about them again. Yeah. Just I played exceptionally well and yeah, we're gonna. Um, I'm gonna do a um, uh, a study stream with Monica at some point, and we'll definitely look at the Ace King suited hand because that was the most interesting one. Yeah, that was definitely a, a very interesting one. So yeah, I want to say thanks to everyone who has been watching and join us today, and congratulations to Pilsen seventy one who won Dara's buck. Uh. And uh, thank you, Dora, for joining the stream. 
Thanks, Monica. It was a pleasure. It was an honor to have you on here. And I know for a fact that my good friend, Yeva Kim, has a, a dream about me and you joining her stream a Friday night for a beer or something. So Yeah, exactly. I'll do, we'll do that sometime as well. Okay. Um, then I want to say good night to everyone and thanks. And I will ride you guys to Josh, who playing poker now. Have watched him a little bit. So come and yep. join over there. Okay. Thank you guys. Thanks, everyone.